Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Checkpoint Podcast. I am your host, Supervin47. Joining me today will be Boy in a Barrel. Hey, The Suki. Hey. And returning to cause mischief once again, Parlock. Hello. How are you guys doing? I'm good. <laughs> the previous 15 minutes never happened. <laughs> I, totally did. <laughs> I, I just want to point out the hardest bit of any podcast to be a guest on is when they're introducing people because I always just sit there trying so hard not to burst out laughing. <laughs> I, I just like a, I had a, the smirk across my face. I was like, nope, don't do it. He's introduced <laughs> to the podcast. <laughs> I had like, you know, at primary school or like at high school when they're reading your name on the register and you're concentrating so hard not to screw up going, yeah, I'm here. I was like, right, I just need to say hi. Right. I know Hello, I was gonna be- <laughs> Mr. Supervin. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Finn's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take long. Podcast now better, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> I knew my name was going to be first, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit, I'm up. It's your time to shine. <laughs> I've got to go first. I'm going to set the precedent. What am I going to do? <laughs> God damn it. And also, apparently, we've got host Supervin fucking somewhere. <laughs> somewhere? God. God. <laughs> that guy. That guy is such an asshole. I know. <laughs> He's such a terrible host, right? I don't remember his name. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I didn't think I'm the... But... <coughs> Again, at least mono-branding. At least I got mono-brand successfully. Well, yeah. Successfully. <laughs> that doesn't really say a lot when you're not as adorable as us. Ow. He does have a point there. It's in country. By the <laughs> way, this is the British edition of the podcast. <laughs> just all right, Gavna. Just me and all the English. The English England. are coming. England! We are on one of them podcasty things, aren't we, Gaffner? Oh my god. Chin chin chaps. Chin chin chaps. <laughs> Tally ho! <laughs> and this is. Double bean! And this is part of why my hair goes prematurely white. <laughs> <laughs> you love us, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, how about we go around. Uh, Talking about what we do, introducing ourselves to the audience. Um, we'll start with Boy in a Barrel. Just going in order. I know I was going to be first. I was panicking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get up in front of the board. Boy Presentation. I do, I do YouTube stuff. I do Twitch stuff. I make weird tweets all the time. Like last night, I was just like shipping Marvel characters together because of these guys. Um, yeah, that's what I do because that's the kind of person that I am. Um... um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just closed Skype and walks away when he can't think of anything more to say. Yeah. Drops the mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> up, up. No, fuck this. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Arms are waving. I was trying to think of something. It wasn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Suki, you're right, up. Uh, right. I'm Suki. I am um, occasionally I do gaming things. I'm trying to get back into it, but I'd stop because of uni and blah blah blah. But I tweet nonsense, a lot of Star Trek things. Um, I draw things on stream, usually sexy superheroes. Uh, that's about it, really. Mm. <laughs> but look, you're up. Oh, do I have to? Um, I do YouTube. I've recently returned to streaming. I'm an asshole on Twitter, and I post a lot of Monsters Inc. gifs. That's me. In general, forever. You're welcome, internet. Mm-hmm. And how. I, I'm, I'm not what anyone wants, but I'm what everyone needs. You're not Batman. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't judge my life choices. No, 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 judging, no judging. If I'm Batman, I'm Batman. Of course. Now I've just got images of Batman sat in the Batcave giggling over Monsters University gifts. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that could totally be your next art project, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. So, so Supervin has hey, a name Super. that starts with Super, so he must be Superman. And Joe Everson wants to be Batman. And Suki wants to be Wonder Woman. Yeah. Where do I stand? 
Um, Sexy Aquaman? The mullet and the hooked hand. Yeah. Cat, Catwoman. S Suki, feel free to link your um link photos of your artwork. Like, I I well as 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 the tasteful ones, I guess. I don't know. They're not tasteful. The sexy <laughs> superheroes. I'm not bad. My uni won't let me put them in the degree show. Oh my god. See, that's that's weird. Because when I was at school, they let someone who was in my year put the A level art of someone just holding boobs, like it was a portrait of someone just holding their boobs, and it was this giant piece of art, and they put it oh. up right in the front of the school. So as soon as you walked in for like a month, <laughs> ever it were. I tell you what, I'll link my website because it's got them on there. There we go. Yeah, it's got I mean, a lot of want someone stuff. accidentally posting not safe for work stuff in the chat, would we? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. Well, I oh, hope I'm we all team. learned our lessons. <laughs> just, <laughs> is, is that code for I hope pal out there did fucking message for finally? <laughs> Wait, is that a is that a jigglypuff on a macho? Yeah, it's jiggly choke. Why did you draw a jiggly choke? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, I'm I'm sorry. What a jiggly choke? <laughs> you drew, she drew a Someone jiggly choke. Oh, yeah, I felt it was important. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I love its stupid face. <laughs> hey, I'm here to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to enjoy it. Oh my! Oh my God, the Batman! <laughs> I am not. I am not flipping on monitor view right now. I am... Oh my God, you drew the Luchador! Oh, Luchachan, yeah. Lucha yeah, I drew Luchachan as a little baby. Actually, that one we can. We can throw up in chat. Let's see. It, oh. Or is that the link? Jaden. Yes. Come on. What? Don't do that. Just let me do it. I'm oh. better at this. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you. Found my new favorite Green Lantern romance. <laughs> <laughs> Vin let me do it. I'm better <laughs> Apparently, Suki is pure evil. <clears throat> Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I just, you know, everyone needs a bit of loving. Oh, yeah, you drew the orc as well. You drew the badass orc. That's me. It's a self portrait. <laughs> you drew the oh, badass orc. Oh, Suki orc, yeah. How, George, the only thing you have to fear is my love for you. <laughs> 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 we are not drunk or high. This is just us Yo. being us. I had a pizza. <laughs> I've had three gallons of coffee. I, I, I smoked a whole bowl. <laughs> okay, well, Parlock's the only one. I had ten whole marijuanas. <laughs> well, I injected them straight into the blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fired from a crossbow at 50 feet in a dart. <laughs> Milked from the rare weed snake. I've heard it's super dangerous to snort that much marijuana, though, Parlock. Be careful. <laughs> all, all right. Don't be doing that, Mary right, Jane Watson. <laughs> I've had some of that reefer. That <laughs> reefer madness is the best music. Oh my god. Sorry, Vin. Ruined your podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> video games! We're here for video games! Are we? Yes. Are we? I didn't even oh. know what we were here for, to be honest. I thought, we, I thought we were here to talk about attractive superheroes. I thought that yeah, was. Yeah, I thought this was like a. Um, three of us were here. An OTP convention. We were discussing our favourite pairings and. You know, I found fan art of pre-Blueness Beast from X-Men yesterday, and I've just been sending it to everyone ever since, but it's horrifically not safe for work, so I probably can't today. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> well, you can, you can drop it in Skype, but um, don't, <laughs> don't, put it, don't put it in chat, please. Is it bad to say I'm a bit excited? <laughs> oh my god. 
around. Right. Oh god, damn bollocks. There we go. Oh yeah. You, that's, you, you that's keep like, going. I'll try and find yeah. that. Oh, this is devolving so quickly. Uh, welcome to the <laughs> Checkpoint Podcast, where we try to talk about video games, YouTubing, <laughs> streaming, and all sorts of other gaming-related content. Emphasis on the word try. And we try. <laughs> I don't hate you. <laughs> try. We try so hard, and in the end, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I don't know the words that I'm wearing to make it make any sense. So it's just then it doesn't even matter. <laughs> but then mental gymnastics to try and fit that in there. Oh my god. But anyway, while Parlock's looking for a pre-blue beast fan fiction, what kind fan of games? Arts. Fan arts. Sorry. Oh, not... Just I can post the link in chat because it won't just automatically post the pictures like last time. Are you sure? Um. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, go on. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's a fucking gamble. <laughs> Oh my god, Oh god, why is it on the recorded content? Can we do this? The picture of him, the picture of him in his briefs. Why does his face look like a big Ryan Reynolds? Oh, I have... Okay, let me double check. Mander, Mander, Mander captures off, okay. He does. I should probably, you know, roll down my blind if we're talking about this. <laughs> I'm on the ground floor, and if my mum looked like a couple of degrees to the side, she could totally see from my window. <laughs> okay. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. It's good art. It is good art, actually. I'm yeah. quite impressed with that. It is. Mm-hmm. I like the hair. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite good. The art is totally, totally good. <laughs> right, the it's, art. It's drawn. It's drawn go- good. <laughs> there, there is, there is good penmanship. It's, it is drawn. Good, no lines, don't good it? There is, there is good pen. There is good draw. Let me, let me just tab out. <laughs> yeah, it's drawn well. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, I can Chris. never read on X Men again because there's an, there's an issue where just essentially it's mostly just Beast and Jean Grey Dayton, and then all I'll be thinking is just that pose. And that outfit. I'll be like, nope. The beast is the best, though. Like, like, right. Even without that picture, Beast is just the best X Man, hands down, from all of them. And fuck anyone who says otherwise. I'm out. I'm lying down. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> a video game trivia note: Beast only stars as a supporting character in X Men Legends Two: Rise of Apocalypse. There we it go. A tutorial <laughs> in the Spider Man Two game on the PS One, though. Hmm. I don't, I don't know how heavily he features in Marvel Heroes. I don't think he it does at all. Wait, the kind of fuck? Anyways, what games have you guys been playing? Wait, what's going on? <laughs> what the fuck? What? what? <laughs> we have Solon clones. <gasps> bam, bam, bam. We have Solon and Solon cubed. What? Um, um, what? Who's, <laughs> wait, who's who? Um. <laughs> what? I think Solon eventually attained such a level of style that he couldn't hold it within one physical form. And he's just divided <laughs> into two separate people. It's mitosis. <laughs> God. Oh my god, we're gonna have that quandary that always happens whenever there's clones. They'll be like, I'm the real one. No, I'm the real one. And we'll have to choose which one to shoot. Like, ask them a question only Solon would know. <laughs> but they would both know it, being clones! Well, it depends if they, if they as clones shared memories or not. And how long they've been cloned for. Yeah, that's, that's true. Maximus is the real Solon. <laughs> <laughs> There's some real I am Spartacus shit going on in here. <laughs> I am Solon. <laughs> no, I am Solon. 
No, I am Solon. <laughs> Suki's totally Solon. I am Solon. Yeah, we're all Solon. Meridius Decimus Solonicus. <laughs> Turning up one bullet. <laughs> oh my god. Go on, choose. <laughs> you only have one bullet. <laughs> There are 13 viewers in here. Only one can be the real Solon. <laughs> there are 13 you viewers all in the no Solon. Just, yeah, it's just Solon on like 13 computers. <laughs> like, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's excellent. Well played, Solon. <laughs> oh god, did I just... I just pressed a button in Skype and I don't know what it did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everything seems to be fine now, so... Uh, yeah, you're still here. So, okay. So yeah. what... Okay, legitimately though, what games have you guys been playing? Or what have you been working on over the past week? And we can talk about it. Uh, any, uh, any, <laughs> any one of you, feel free. Who wants to go first? Barrel? God damn you guys! <laughs> you're the first on the list after me. Yeah, Vin. you set a precedent. Why, why couldn't we go backwards for once? Why is it always going to be me first? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> right, this well, is my Austin. podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Mr. Oh my god, I didn't know- I didn't remember that it actually posts a picture in chat. <laughs> all, I can, all I'm recalling now is just the exact moment when you flick from the splash screen to the chat point podcast screen. And then just the exact top of the chat. <laughs> <laughs> a, a perfect golden pair of testicles. <laughs> there was no context! They didn't need to know! <laughs> I specifically <laughs> waited until the thighs were gone! <laughs> yep, Vin waited until the thighs were gone. 2014. Remember the date, folks. The day Vin <laughs> had the thighs gone. <laughs> what that goes down in infamy. Oh my god. Why do you think I waited? <laughs> I wanted it to be so good. Why? Oh my god. Why did you wait? You knew we weren't going to be cooperative. <laughs> wait for you, baby. He waited for you. <laughs> we're setting the pace here. We're, we're setting the bar. The bar's on the floor. <laughs> what floor? You blew out the floor. Now it's in the ground. It's in the basement. We're trying to tone to China, goddammit! <laughs> <laughs> there is no bar. I lose all. <laughs> Wait. Um, what? The hell is going on in chat? <laughs> the Solons are communicating. Oh my god. Oh no, this, this is it. They're a find. This is it, yes. Well, what is it? This, um... What is it? Um... <laughs> Shit, the thing... The thing where all the computers, like, come alive or something. The singularity. Singularity, that's it. It's a solenarity. <laughs> <laughs> they achieved sentience, they're coming for us. <laughs> all will be solen. All. <laughs> Praise be so long. <laughs> all I'm waiting for now is a Photoshop of Agent Smith from The Matrix, but it's just Solon's head instead. No, it, it's just the normal Agent Smith, it's just the hair's dyed blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh please, someone Photoshop that. I'll I would gladly throw that up on on the screen. Just please. I've already got Photoshop out. There you go. <laughs> and I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> That's okay. I'll handle the rest of it. I guess I've got time talking about what I've been playing this week then, so he's yep. got time. Yes! <laughs> 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 if Vin's not gonna take control dates. of this podcast. <laughs> this is our good cop, bad cop routine going on here. <laughs> Alright, what have you been playing, Beryl? Uh, well, I've actually done nothing for YouTube, really, this week, and I've only done one stream on Twitch, which was one without a mic, <laughs> because I am the worst man this week. 
but I've uh, I've I've been playing some Injustice because I've been catching back into that game, and then just hating myself for wanting to get back into that game because I remember how cheesy some of the characters are, especially when the AI plays them. Uh, I've also been playing some Far Cry Three recently because I finally got around to doing that. Oh, you haven't played it uh, yet? No, I uh, I played like a little bit of it near release, but I never actually sat down with it properly and got into it. Mm. Whereas I did, I finally got around to it now. Uh, also started some Mass Effect stuff going. Um, tried out some Persona 4 Arena. I tried Tomb Raider a little bit. Been playing oh. some DC Online, getting back into that. Mm. Uh, tried out the latest Splinter Cell, a fair bit. Oh, how is, how is it? Uh, it's good. It's it's like Conviction. It's it's definitely not bad to that old mold of Splinter Cell games. There is there is an element of you just pop a few dudes and then you just go right execute triggers time, and then you just pop everyone's heads off casually. <laughs> but I it's, uh, I gotta say I don't really like that system. It's just down to a theory because I'm the best. atrocious. Chaos Theory is the best stealth game to have ever been made, and then. Conviction came along and it was fun. I did enjoy Conviction, and then Blacklist came along and I played about an hour of it and I just couldn't. I'm enjoying Blacklist, but it feels a lot more like it expects me to just kind of plod along. Whereas Conviction actually, as it had a consistent story, hmm, it mean a yeah. lot more. Yeah, I didn't I like, like how many side same, missions yeah. there were in Blacklist. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing with Hitman Absolution. Was that's not normally the kind of game I'd go for. And if it didn't have that story element to the single player stuff, then I probably would have just not bothered with carrying on because I'm terrible at that game. As I'm terrible at any stealth game. For example, <laughs> when I played Metal Gear Solid 2, because my friend was like, hey, here's Metal Gear Solid 2, play a Metal Gear Solid game. Finally do this! <laughs> and I was like, cool, I'll give it a go. And uh, yeah, then I eventually <clears throat> played it. And I played on easy, so I didn't even play a snake in that game. I think I got to about Naked Riding, and I was just like, no. Me and this game will not work with each other. This is not happening. Mm hmm. Okay. But, uh, yeah. I've uh, also been playing some DC Universe Online, because I've been getting back to that now that I've got a PS3 that can handle having that kind of space. And, yeah, I played a bit of some other stuff like Saints Row 2, because I've gotten back into that, and Batman Arkham, because I got back into that. <laughs> But I will hand over the reins now, because yeah, because one <clears throat> because one of the other two needs to get back in the conversation. Okay, <laughs> right, yeah. Um, uh, so this is my turn then, yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> let me just pull up your channel here so we can have some of your content oh, showing. <laughs> yeah, Tony did that for Barrel. Da -da. <laughs> well, because you weren't talking about any of the games that were recent on your channel. That's, that's, that's because I haven't made videos for my channel in like a week or two. Because I basically went, you know what? I haven't got time for this business anymore. And then made like two weeks worth of videos and went, I'm having a break, man. <laughs> and then I've been meaning to make more videos for the past few days. So I just have not gotten to it because I fell asleep every time. Okay. All right. Um. So, Suki, you're up. So on my channel, we've been having a lot of Saints Row 4, I think it's, yeah, Saints Row 4, with um, Matt Sparks, Sparky, right. and um, we've been doing that for ages now, it's, I've been having a good laugh with it, although it, it gets really tedious, like, some of the little mini mission things, I'm just like, ugh, yep. stupid Rift mini games, I'm like, no, I don't want to do these anymore. <laughs> what, oh, hang on, what are, what are those? Uh, I have Saints Row 4, but I've, I'm waiting to play it with, with my own co-op buddy. So, um, have you played the third, Saints Row the third? Oh, uh, we're busy playing through it right now. Or any of the previous right ones. You know how you get, like, your map, and you get, um, like, influence areas? Uh-huh. Where your gang, your homies show up. Well, in Saints Row the four, in Saints Row 4, you do the kind of things, but with, um, minigames instead, so you unlock rifts, or you inject viruses and things. Mm-hmm. And, um... Half the minigames from they're just so tedious. There's one that's like audio surf where you collect little um energy bubble things. Yeah, the motor bubble. Yeah, and it's just it lasts forever, it's slow, it's boring, and you're just like, Will you just end this, please? <laughs> so it's the one reason I'm happy to go back to Saints Row Two after three and four, because I've not played Saints Row Two in 
probably a good year or two. The the side missions in Saints Row 2 were so much better. Yeah, these, I just, I just, the rest of the game's great, it really is, but I feel the superpowers were a bit, I don't know. They well, kind of get rid of the need for half the game. <clears throat> like, yeah. driving cars and stuff used to be a big thing, you know, that's how you got around, and now you can just jump up a building and then run off. And then half the mini missions are like, oh no, we're just going to take your powers off you for no reason. Just, ugh. So I'm I'm thinking, a lot of these big you know city exploration games they have a lot of filler. Like, yeah. Like even even something is that a um. Was that a holographic? You know what? Let's let's not let's not get into that. <laughs> Sorry, what? I forgot about that. <laughs> you want to finish that sentence? Because I completely missed it. <laughs> no 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 we're good. Um, you know the famous weapon from Chat, Saints Row we... Three. It's that. <laughs> but it glows blue and it's now called the Manhattan. After Dr. Manhattan. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, even even good games like Sleeping Dogs, like big sc- big city like crawler uh-huh, type uh-huh. games, they have a lot of filler. Good games they like do, Sleeping yeah. Dogs. My situation with open world games is either the story is really good and then everything else is a bit pish. Or everything else is quite good and then the story's a bit pish. Because, like, the Sleeping Dog story is fantastic. I mm-hmm. ran through that, no problems. Yep. Uh, yep. Assassin's Creed 2, which is one of my favourite open world games, has a fantastic story. I could happily ignore everything else. Far Cry 3 has a horrendous story. The missions are a pain in the ass. Yep. But Especially everything else is great. I, I happily sat and did all the outposts in that game. Mm-hmm. And I, now I've got, like, an hour's worth of story to finish. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Game. I just I'm really finished. don't like open world games where you have to drive. I do not like driving in games at all. So Sleeping Dogs, didn't like it because of the driving. Grand Theft Auto, don't like it because of the driving. Saints Row, don't like it because of the driving. But stuff like The Saboteur has driving, but there's still a lot of freedom of movement on foot, yeah. which is really cool. And Assassin's Creed, of course, has a lot of on foot stuff, which is awesome. And that's why I, was, I hate the boats in Assassin's Creed. I just don't like vehicles. <laughs> oh, okay. my, my attitude is, I'm like that, but about walking. So I can't play Bethesda games. I get completely bored playing Bethesda games because you have to walk everywhere. And I'm yeah. like, oh. There is a lot of walking, yeah. I like that. They, like, they expect me to walk across the map to do, do the next I'm glad that it's gone the way of the dinosaurs' stamina bars. Like, I don't oh. know if you ever played Diablo 2, but the first few levels in that game were like, oh my god. I just want to run places, and you're making me walk. Will you stop? <laughs> yeah. Aren't, um, aren't, um... Saints Row 3 does that, and it's really annoying. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's right. There is a stamina bar in Saints Row 3. Shit. But there is There's an upgrade where you can sprint forever, oh. so... But... See, I maintain the best open-world movement system in any game is DC Universe Online. Because you basically just go, like, there's three different movement options... One of which is, I think, it's acrobatics, where you have like a really weird, goofy-looking run on the floor, and then you can just climb up buildings and you get a grappling hook after a little while. Then there's Ooh. like super speed, where you just run everywhere really fast, and you get an upgrade to run even faster. And you can just run up buildings or anything, and then there's flight, which works as oh, you'd yeah. think flight would. And basically, you just press a button, and then the movement mode activates, and you press it again, turn it off, and mm. that's it. There's no stamina bars. You have it from the start. You get an upgrade like a third of the way through the levels. And that's it. There you go. How yeah. is that? I haven't played DC Universe Online for ages. It's good. Uh, I I think I get a bit iffy when people sort of say it's you know free to play because I basically bought a DLC straight away because I'm not weird and I wanted Green Lantern powers. Okay. <laughs> like oh. When the game came out. Mm-hmm. Because, to be honest, the DLC for that game is worth it by quite a shot. And the mm. only thing that they really restrict is the end of game content. If you're a free, if you're a free to play player, there's also like inventory space and currency stuff. But to be honest, you can get by with that worrying about either of those things because you just sell the stuff you don't need, and yeah. you don't need to buy stuff from the stores that much. So, I I enjoy the game a lot, personally, because it's about as close to my dream superhero game as I've ever gotten. So, mm. and it is free to play. Yeah, so, it's... I should probably download that at some point. It is fun. It was definitely a lot of fun when I used to play it. 
Um, let's see. There's there's, there's, there's a, a stream of it once. Does anyone have any videos of uh, of that I can throw up? Or? I have videos yeah, of DC cool. Universe Online, yeah. Alright. Let's find it then. And I will throw it up. But continue talking. Yeah, there's a, you can either you can either stumble onto my outtake videos of that, where me and the people I was recording it with on PC found weird situations, like we found a guy that was being Jesus, and then we just danced with him. <laughs> Why the hell not? To Why be honest, not? there are people that dress up as Deadpool in that game. Yeah. There are so many people that try like, oh, I'm just going to be my exact same, like, favourite superhero in this game. I could be any hero, but I'm just going to be this one. Yeah, I did I'd, make, I'd I'd did make a Phantom X clone on the PC version, but that's okay because no one knows who Phantom X is anyway. Oh, when I used to play, um, I think it was Champions Online, I, I had this really bad habit of just picking the, se- of just making the same character every time I try to make a new one. So like, I'm gonna make this brand new character and play it completely differently to my old one. It would still always be a huge character with superhuman strength that could jump for miles like every time without fail because I'm unoriginal. <laughs> I do that in every game though, like uh, RPGs or something, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be an arch class and she'll be like, tall and elfin if that's possible and she's just the same character in every game. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I try, I've tried to avoid doing that stuff, but at the same time I do kind of fall into it. But I try, I try and avoid doing that, I try and mess about with different power sets and things. I, I try, but it never works out. I just want to play with dual pistols, I can't help it! <laughs> And if oh, I, right, I tried psychic dual pistols character again, well, I tried to play um, Guild Wars Two as a dual pistols character, and that doesn't work properly for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I remembered how boring Guild Wars Two can be, and just sort of stopped. I really didn't get on with Guild Wars Two. I just I, I played it with some friends, and it was fun when I was playing it with friends. But then I realised, you know, I don't actually like any of the races in this. I don't like any of the. <laughs> Quests. I don't like the world events. I don't like anything to do with it. Uh, I think I just went back to Rift. <laughs> I enjoyed what I played of Rift. I didn't play a huge amount of it, but I'm fairly high level in Rift. I, I love it. I'm trying I mean, to. It, it is just the world of Warcraft. Most enough. But... Um? I don't tend to stick with MMOs long enough to get that point. DC Universe Online is the only game I've ever got to a full level in, and that's not that. Difficult. Yeah, I haven't got to level cap in anything. Mm, uh, I did in World of Warcraft with about five characters. I did and for this about. That's why I just don't play them anymore because I, I just. Yeah. Was... I I got to cap in WoW back in oh Jesus Christ it would have been like two thousand eight, two thousand seven. It was That's what pre pre cataclysm. Yeah, it was pre cataclysm, um, and. That was about it. Like even now playing Guild Wars 2, it's it's just like it doesn't hold me, you know? The the story, the gameplay, it doesn't really hold me yeah. to to want to grind and level up. Like I know the Magumps love it. I know um uh who else? I think uh Ice Shark Bear loves Ice it. Bear. Yeah. Yeah, Those... Ice Bear and the Magumps are the ones I played it with. And it's like they they all really really love it and like I enjoyed it because I was playing it with them and they're my friends. But the actual game, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> the only, the only time... I'm enjoying it. The only time DC, DC Universe Online ever caught me off with that is there's a point when you get to about level 29. And eventually you'll have sat and you'll have done all the missions and you'll be like X far from yeah, to level 30 and the game's sort of like, well, you can go and beat up some of the big heroes or villains or you can go and mm. do some of the alerts. But basically it's on your on your back now to get to level 30 and I'm like Yay. yeah Neverwinter does that I got to a bit it's... in Neverwinter where um, all, all my next because I was just trying to get the quests done so I could stop um, and there was one bit where I was level like 30 something and I was like quite a way away from the next level but then all the quests were like three levels ahead of me, so I couldn't actually do them without grinding. I just sort of closed the game and never touched it again. Is that? Uh, oh, right. Uh, Gino's asking us to reintroduce ourselves so that he can match faces to voices. Um, I'm Supervin47. Uh, I'm Paula. I'm Boy in a Barrel and a Whale. I'm Suki. <laughs> and apparently... S- <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> uh, apparently Scribble is in chat now. Yay! Scribble! 
Uh, Scribble <laughs> is, you know, okay. Yeah, I, I thought, th- I thought so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those, those are our voices to match the names. If Gino doesn't know who I am, I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Feelings were hurt. Is that out, Gino. <laughs> Uh, Gino, how's your streaming going, by the way? Oh, actually, no, wait, um, hold that thought. Uh, <laughs> Parlock, what have you been playing? Um, well, I know I said I wasn't going to do it before the podcast, but I'm totally playing the Attack on Titan game right now. Um, <laughs> oh. See, I was going to play Arkham City during the podcast, but I thought, <laughs> no, I'll be good and I'll be focused. Right, right. I'll close it while I'm talking. Um, <laughs> I haven't actually, the only thing I've actually play, played this week for the channel is uh, Axe Fatalis. Which is a first-person RPG type thing developed by Arcane, and it's like it was a series that I wasn't really planning to do for a while, considering it's a really long RPG. But I'm having a lot of fun with it. Actually, it's meant it was made to be Ultimate World Three, but then they couldn't get the licensing for it, so they just had to make it Arx Fatalis, and. It, it's really interesting. It's a really interesting series to make because it's it's an open world RPG. You can go basically anywhere, mm-hmm. but it's all completely underground and it's all it's like it's all tunnels and underground cities and that sort of thing. So you do end up having a natural progression through it, but you could totally just walk straight to the end of the game if you wanted to, like without it, combat. Uh, there's there's probably could be combat, but. You that you can stealth there. Okay. It's like it's like um. There's a bit early on in the game, and it's already happened in the series where you come across this outpost, and by the outpost there's this door, and then later on in the game, if you do stuff right and it's like a secret, you can get this key which opens the door, and because the whole story of it is that the sun, the planet they're on, died, so the entire outside is completely frozen. So you mm-hmm. open this door that's been there and you've walked past it loads of times since the start of the game. Near the end of the game, you finally get this key to open the door and you open it and you freeze to death. And that's like a secret <laughs> ending. <laughs> I'm sorry? It, it, it's like, okay. That, it, it's not something anybody really comes across unless you know about it. So mm-hmm. it's... I wouldn't say it's really a spoiler because the only time you know about it is if it's already been spoiled for you. So, But okay. it's just... It's, just re- it's, it's such a cool game and it's like... It, it's fantasy, it's all fantasy underground so you've got like the humans, you've got dwarves you've got trolls which are really fucking adorable you've got the goblins no, uh, no. I, I heard a snicker then right, let me find a picture of an Axelitalis troll <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that series it, it is really, really cool and it's by the same people who did um, Dishonored Eventually. Yes, yes it is. I, I actually got a copy of Oxford Italis when I pre-ordered Dishonored. Yes, yes. That, that's how a lot of people got it. But uh, now they've made Oxford open source. So there's this big there's this big project to port Oxford to Mac and Linux uh, called um, Arx Libertatis. And yeah, as, yeah. Part, as part of that, basically... If you download the demo and download Arx Libertatis, you can play the entire game for free. And um, they let you do that. That's fine by the devs. Hmm, I don't know whether cool. I don't know whether the devs agreed to it, but I know there's a similar thing going with Stalker, the first one, where they're doing it all up to HD and trying to correct some of the issues with the game, and they've made that completely free to download without having the game. Hmm. Oh, How is Stalker that adorable? It's fucking adorable. <laughs> it looks like a no. Goron. They are so adorable because it's like you know you'd think trolls would be they'd see you and then try and kill you to death straight away, but in the game they're actually one of the friendliest races to the humans. So it's like you'll come across them and it'll be like they're mining for the goblins or something and they're on strike. So it's like you'll go up to them and they'll ask you to help them because they're on strike and they want to get off strike. And so there's this entire quest line where you're helping the trolls. And it is oh so cool. So, so there's the northerners. It all makes sense now. The what? <laughs> I no. was just saying that they thought that trolls were people that everyone thought was going to beat them up, but were really nice. Then you oh. said strike up from mining, from working for other people, and they wanted you to help them. And I was like, yeah, that's northerners, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying I'm a troll? 
I'm not quite sure how to take that. <laughs> no, I'm so, no, it's the reverse. It's the trolls are the, <laughs> the northerners of Oxfordalis. Not that Oxfordalis is the real world. <laughs> Our world is the fictional world. And northerners are based off trolls. <laughs> Shot fired. fired. Northerners weren't invented until trolls had already been made up. <laughs> it's like, it's it's really difficult to describe why they're adorable unless you haven't actually unless you've actually seen the game because they t they don't look it but they totally are adorable in the game and I love them. And then mm. you've got like the goal. It's really cool. It's just a really fucking cool game and I recommend any. It's really really cheap on Steam. But I, I totally watched, recommend. I I think it's like five dollars or yeah. six. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. been. And I mean, if you pre-ordered Dishonored, you have it already. And I mean, like I said, you can download the demo and then download Arx Libertatis, and it's free. Okay, um, Suki, you were going to say something? I was saying I've watched a few of your videos, pal. The spell system's quite interesting. Yes! Yeah, please, please, talk about that. Um, I'll so, try to find a clip of you casting a spell or something. Uh, probably do that in the first episode. I... Um, yeah, in the game you'll pick up these runes, which have... Um, markings on them and what you do if you want to cast a spell you have to hold down control and then you have to drag the mouse in the shape of the rune on it so it's like if you want to cast um, a spell which makes fire everywhere you have to sort of swipe your mouse to the left and then you have to swipe it in a U shape and that will be the that's how you cast spells in it and um, it's really cool but most of the time it doesn't work properly because <laughs> <laughs> you have to be really precise about it yeah. And it's so cool. Um, Gino, yeah, if you download the Arx Vitalis demo, which is on Steam, and then download something called Arx Libertatis, it's free. And they're okay with it being free, apparently. You know, I actually I actually play, tried playing the um, original, the non-Libertatis version, and the spellcrafting is just so clunky, Yeah, is, is a nice way to put it. Well, it's... when, when, probably when you played it, they hadn't actually updated the Steam version, the latest version. Um, so it's like on the original Steam version, which was one point one one, nothing worked. It's like it was completely broken. The frame rate was awful. There was, um, you could see through all the walls. Everything turned black every time you looked at it. It was broken as shit. And then, as part of their sort of giving up the game, releasing it to open source, I updated the Steam version to 1.12. And it's like, I've actually bought the game twice because I bought it on GOG because they had the latest version. But then, as soon as I, like the day after I bought it on GOG, they updated the Steam version. <laughs> <laughs> nice, like, nice, Parlock. Well done. I know. But well done. Um, Arx Libertatis fixes a lot of the problems that the normal vanilla version has. Mm. Okay. All right. Good. Um, well, I keep, well, I keep thinking about that spellcasting system. As didn't Harry Potter do that in the first games? Yes. Did they? Yeah, in like yeah. the PS One ones, we had to go and learn all the. We had to like press triangle X, triangle <laughs> circle. Yeah, you used to have to like make shapes and stuff. Because yeah. I've seen people play in the PC versions, and they literally have to drag the mouse into these exact shapes. And you're like, yeah. That seems painful. Yeah. <laughs> It, it is painful to do, so I'm not really playing as a mage. It seems like but... something that would be um, better now, with the you know advances that we've got. Yeah, I think of, like, know, a re-release of this or a port of this with um, the PS4 with its touchscreen would be yeah, really definitely. cool. Because then you could it just make drag a on like, the screen. Yeah, it makes system like, that makes sense. Honest, the, you know, there's the PS3 Move and everything. And I, whether you know or not, there was like the Harry Potter game book of spells that they did, and they oh, made yeah, the was, wooden yeah. book peripheral. Yeah, I've uh, I've played that. It's it's kind of like that, except you also have to say the spell when you're learning the spell, and you essentially have to like move the move in the way of the specific spell that you're trying to do to get it to do whatever. In the challenge, yeah, just by the way, on the podcast right now is the spell casting system. Mm hmm. <laughs> Now, um, how, have you have you played many older style games like this, Parlock? Have you played like Deus Ex or um, um uh, or Morrowind? Say, I haven't. I've played a bit of Deus Ex, but I have played um, 
Morrowind. I have played Thief, like the proper old original Thief. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've played um, the original Ultima Underworld, which, seeing as this was meant to be Ultima Underworld 3, was interesting. Yeah, I've, I've got a load of all of that older game stuff on GOG. So, it's like I've got all the old D&D RPGs, like Baldur's Gate and that sort of thing as well. It's just... I just like seeing where games have come from. <laughs> mm, okay. Ooh, I there's... really nearly bought Icewind Dale the other day. Icewind Dale. Icewind Dale's really cool because it's, it's like if you want story, you play like Planescape Torment. But if you want combat, you play Icewind Dale or you play um, Dungeon of Elemental... No. Yeah, Dungeon of Elemental Evil, I think it's called. Which are a lot more based on the actual combat and D&D gameplay. Yeah. As opposed to storytelling mm. well i played them when i was like eight seven eight years old you know like donkey's years ago and i'm like i, I was crap at them because you know they're quite they're not exactly like super simple games i was like i wonder what that'd be like you know as like an adult with motor yeah. control skills and <laughs> yeah they are thing. really complicated but i mean i still go back to planescape torment every once in a while just to see if i can actually play it properly like, I just they're just so difficult. Mm. I mean, I I tried um, Planescape Torment. I got murdered within. Actually, I think I died as soon as I set foot outside of the uh, outside of the starting area. I went yeah, you down... get killed by the um, like Dusties, Dusters, something like that. Uh, I don't. Maybe I literally. Yeah. I literally. No, no walked... they're a bit later on. Yeah, they're, they're just zombies outside the main area. Uh, not even the main area. Like, I literally walked down the wrong neighborhood, said the wrong, like, <laughs> said the wrong words, and the whole gang just, like, just beat me to death. I was like, what happened? <laughs> what happened? I didn't... I, I just said hi. And you, and they were all like, you walked into the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm gonna take you. Welcome back to Grove Street. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Shit, and then I tried to run, and they just, like, they surrounded me because of the freaking turn-based system. Beat me to death. Goddamn. That happened to me when I played the, um, the latest Final Fantasy MMO. Because, like, Can there you- is, like, level 40 enemies pretty close to this newbie starter area. And I was just, like, tootling around going, oh, this is a very pretty game. Look at a little squirrel. I'll follow it across this bridge. Bam, dead. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I keep seeing Final Fantasy fourteen, and I keep really wanting it, and then I remember I don't actually like Final Fantasy that much. <laughs> so it would be a bad idea. I played it for a few months, but I'm not going back to it. It just... it I don't know. Yeah, I just watched uh, Sauron play it, and I think I got my fill of it from that. Yeah. I don't really care about the story in it. I was just like, I want to play an MMO, but I don't want to go back to World of Warcraft. We'll try this. It looks pretty. It was all right. Mm. Pretty solid. My my mistake personally was that I like playing DC Universe Online more a lot more on the PvP servers, which is basically n- just mistake number one, because most of the areas you'll find there's always at least one or two people that are level thirty, and there's no real benefit to doing this. But they'll just hang out around there, and you'll be like, "Oh yeah, I'm just doing this mission. Oh man, I'm a new superhero." And then just like some villain will be like, "Ha, dick!" And then just like punch you once, and you're like, "Oh, I'm dead now." Okay. <laughs> like, I was gonna do that mission, but okay. Jesus Christ! I'm I'm not keen on PvP. I used to play on uh, PvP servers on WoW, and then I was like, "No, I'm sick of being ganked." No. Yeah, I oh. I. <laughs> I was purely PvE. I was like, nah, I d- I'm super casual. I have, yeah, I don't like PvP. I don't... I, I think it was any other game, I wouldn't play PvP. But as, as, someone, as someone I spoke to about ages ago when I was starting the Let's Play I was doing, because the conversation we had was, well, if you were a superhero, feasibly, there probably would be villains gunning for you at any time. And as annoying as it can get being repeatedly ganked in an area when you try to do a mission, that is kind of how it would be being a superhero villain. So yeah. I kind of just play it for no. the authenticity of it. Yeah, yeah I get that. Yeah, yeah no, no. Um, like, like but but here's here's the problem though. Superheroes are normally paired up with 
villains of equal or, you know, slightly lesser skill, if you're getting ganked by a dude who's like three times your your level, like just the numbers of the game refuse to allow you to fight back. <laughs> like that's a thing. It's like, oh yeah, you know, heroes, villains. If you're a level five going up against a level seventy, come on. <laughs> you know, basically what you're describing is Planet Side Two. <laughs> yeah. well, oh, man, it, it, I'm a new guy. I'm a new guy. Yeah, I'm gonna gonna join the war, and then just like some dude with a mech comes out. He's like, <laughs> yeah. and nope. Like, by the way, I've got more health. All my guns are better, but we're still gonna put you against me. Cause fuck that. Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna pull up your your videos on the <laughs> side too. Oh, I no, yeah, I think you give it a good effort, man. You you you. Really... I, I do like Planet Side Two. It's just. I don't understand anything that happens in it. I'm just yeah, going around making lights happen. I think conceptually, I like Planet Side 2 actually playing it. I've got no idea what the fuck's going on, and all that happens is just I kind of go, uh, well, I've got about 10 miles to drive to the, uh, to the war front, so... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, just find someone to latch onto them and be like, you, you sort of look like you know what you're doing, I'm going to follow you. And then yeah, they get shot, uh, and I'm like, oh... You just always right. feel kind of late to the party. <laughs> yeah. Always. It's one, of, it's one of those games where I feel like you kind of need to be playing with other people. Like, I used to be big into Battlefield 2 on PC back in the day. And you could kind of get away with solo running on that game. Like, you could kind of get away with just sort of following people around or just running off with a shotgun like I used to do. Oh, I didn't but know. Planet Side 2, it's like, no, you've got no hope. You need to be playing with people. Hmm. Uh, one thing I actually like to do in uh, Planet Side 2 is I, I grab the motorcycle, I flip on the radio, like I flip on my, my, my music selection or whatever, and I just ride around, the, the explosions going around everywhere, just like, I'm just having fun. <laughs> I'm just driving through all the explosions. <laughs> I die many, many times, but it's a great fun every time I do it. It's great fun. Yeah, a lot of really cool shit can happen. It's like me and me and Vin were playing a while ago. <laughs> like the entire like we were going around and we found this completely abandoned base and there was nobody there. Yeah. And so we ended up role playing as two elderly Jewish grandparent New Yorkers, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. guarding this area, like a whole comedy '80s Disney film where like everything goes wrong and we're barely missing it. We're <laughs> Thwarting off all these threats by being this elderly Jewish New Yorker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And, and thanks to quad bike mobiles. <laughs> and we we basically got into a tank, right? And we were talking like, "Hey, we should really just have like open mics and have yes. all the people listen to this." <laughs> Yeah, and then I think we had a quick panic because we weren't sure whether we actually were. Because <laughs> we'd go around going like, Harold, where are you going, Harold? <laughs> yeah. Damn it, Gladys, what are you doing? Damn it, Harold. <laughs> like, we weren't entirely sure whether people could hear us or not, and we were soaking so hard they could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean that's just that's the silly shit that you know some a serious game like this, serious quote unquote game should have, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's definitely a make your own fun sort of game <laughs> for sure. You have like two like um you have these, these this is like old quote, old Jewish couple just riding around in a tank just blowing the shit out of people. <laughs> And, and Pollock's yelling at me like, Turn left! Turn left! Go the other way! Damn it, Harold! <laughs> I'm like, damn it, I don't need a map! Harold, why don't you have to turn left, Harold? <laughs> I, think, I think most of the fun in uh, big multiplayer games is just when you just do something yourself and watch the world react. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I was playing Armour 3 with um, one of my friends and um, we were doing the breaking point mod. And mm -hmm. we couldn't find each other for ages, but he found this other guy, and they were both an arm, so they're like, screw it, we'll team up. And then he started making these weird clicks and whistles and like stupid noises down the mic, because we were on Skype. Uh -huh. I was like, what are you doing? He was like, oh, yeah, me and my friend, we just communicate like that now. And they were just there in open mic going, ah! <laughs> 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 it's like, just me sitting on Skype going, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Oh, no, a great game for that sort of thing is um, Rust. Because, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was streaming Rust like like a long time ago when I first got it, 
and I was going around and I was pretending to be this like prophet going around like making religions out of everything <laughs> I saw. <laughs> <laughs> these people came up to me. I was completely butt naked. I had nothing. Well, I had nothing equipped, but I had some pretty important stuff carried, so they couldn't actually see it. And they came up to me, and they were like saying they were going to kill me, and they were making suggestions they were going to shoot me and kill me. And, stuff. and I managed to talk them out of it over open mic on stream <laughs> by like making up all these religions on the spot. Like, greetings, my friends. Do you praise? the pickaxe and they were completely <laughs> gonna kill me I, I managed to be so fucking charming by being the prophet of rust they gave me supplies and then they left me to, to survive so they gave me all this food they gave me guns they gave me armor they gave me everything just because i fucking improvised on open mic and it's so by funny. the way guys parlock is parlock is maxed out on charisma <laughs> and 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 um and what is it persuasion skill? <laughs> so, I just passed every possible speech check. Yeah, <laughs> you were basically as you you basically just smooth talked a whole religion. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. And then I spent an entire night sat outside someone's door, like making cat noises. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. I can I can see you. You can't see me, but I can see you. <laughs> and this person, I could hear them rustling around their house. And on like the tech chat, they said, who's outside my house? <laughs> That's me. I can see you. You've got a very nice house. I was playing it once and I just freshly spawned. You know when you got a rock and that's like it. And this yeah. guy just came up to me and punched me in the head, right? And I was like, that's a bit rude. So I turned around, hit him back, and he started running. I was like, I've got nothing here, right? What am I going to do? So I just, like, held down the mic button. I was just going, <laughs> as I chased him around this, like, little town area. And he was just like, go away, leave me alone. And I was just chasing him around, singing the Benny Hill theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, once... Uh, you know, because some if you haven't played Rust, there's times when you've got like planes which will fly over and drop loads of supplies. Uh -huh. And when that happens, basically the supplies they drop are a really hot zone for everybody, where everybody will die and stuff. Uh -huh. And I just spawned as the thing was dropping right in front of me, basically. <laughs> so this person came over. They were running up. They were, they were shouting. They were going to take supplies and stuff, and like don't kill them. And it's like. Fuck that! I was here first. I killed them. <laughs> I had they had nothing. I just didn't want them to have my stuff, which was rightfully mine. <laughs> it's uh -huh. like, it's like uh -huh. my my plan was to just bat them around a bit until they ran away. But then it's like they shout they like shouting insults over the microphone. It's like, oh, it's on now. <laughs> you were gonna fucking get it now, mate. I killed them. Took all of their stuff. I had a whole. Ha they had all the supplies to build a massive house on them. Which is really hard to make, it's really hard to get. Mm -hmm. And then I took all the supplies and all the airdrop stuff, and then I just sort of sauntered off into the trees, and then got killed by a bear. <laughs> Wait, you got killed by a what? <laughs> I got killed by a bear. <laughs> Karmic um, I, vengeance. I know, but it's like I just spent the rest of the time chatting shit to this person over the text chat because they were so pissed off that I killed them. <laughs> um, it's like, most of the fun of that game is the social aspect. It's like, the actual survival, boring as shit. Mm -hmm. But, like, being the prophet of Rust is so much fun. <laughs> and how you, how you get out of situations, how you improvise by having to talk to people, is really cool. Mm, yes. Uh, it's that, like, the two of you have such differing... Um, Oh, what is it? Uh, differing experiences. It's so fascinating. Like, Parlock, you basically just bullshitted your way out of a sure death. <laughs> yeah. And and Suki, you just intimidated a dude into running away from you. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm Paragon, she's Renegade. Pretty much. Like, <laughs> seriously, Suki, the guy just gave you a bop on the head and you're, like, chasing him through the town, like, uh, ba basically humming this, like, psychotic <laughs> Benny Hill. He was I mean, brilliant. I mean, come on, if someone's chasing after you with a giant rock humming Benny Hill, what would you do? <laughs> Let's be honest. I do it in Daisy as well, though. I just I've spawned again and you, you have nothing when you spawn. 
and I just started following this guy from Towns and I was just singing, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and I followed him to about three different ta- towns and he didn't talk on mic, but he never stopped sprinting. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of just my thing to follow people around and sing obnoxious songs at them. <laughs> it's, it's horrifying. Funny. It's horrifying for the other yeah. person. It depends. <laughs> it depends how horrifying you want to make the song. Like you can just say, "If you're happy and you know, it, clap your hands." If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I just walk around, like just basically saying it in this really disturbing like voice, or go childlike <laughs> at the other end. Oh, you start whispering it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm having a friend Sorry. over to clap our hands because we're happy. It put the lotion on the skin again. <laughs> oh my god. Let me just find the top re- the top Steam review for Rust because it is the funniest thing. Oh, I, I, I think um, I actually have an image of that. Because you mentioned it before. And yeah, there uh, we go. yes, here it is. Yeah. I love this game. I built a house around a guy's house and made him my prisoner. I fed him <laughs> cans of tuna and cooked chicken when it was available. And there sometimes I drop in spare logs of wood when they were available. The best part, he keeps talking to me, telling me his clan's going to raid my structure and save him. I simply responded with, it puts the lotion on its skin again or it gets the hose again. <laughs> there it is. And by hose, I mean I dump charcoal on him. Great game. Hope the servers come up soon. I've- I think my pet may need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. It's on the it's, stream right now. It is a thing of fucking beauty. 176.4 hours on record at the at the writing of this um of They this are on review. 184 now, so. Oh my god. And this was posted uh, December 30th, 2013. If they only put 8 more hours in, how have they fed their slave? <laughs> well, it doesn't take long to feed them. You just drop the food in and then log off again. Well, you know, it's been five months. I figure <laughs> eventually you're going to run out of food and you've got to find it again. I think eventually they so just it's go to the It's going to take more than eight hours. Um, I'm Super Vin, obviously. Uh, I, oh, we need to... We need to start referring to each other more by name, I guess. Because uh, a lot of people here don't recognize our voices. So, um... Yeah, Parlock, you definitely mentioned this uh, on the last podcast, and I had it up. And oh. <laughs> has has Rust changed much since? Uh, I hadn't actually played Rust when I was last on the podcast. I only got it for my birthday. So it hasn't actually been updated since I bought it. <laughs> okay. So Such early brilliant. access, folks. Um, I've not logged into it for a, a, quite a long time. Hmm. There wasn't much in it, know. really. Yeah, they, they do post their uh, dev blog updates every Friday. So it's like they show what they're working on, they just don't update it. Have they taken is... the zombies out yet? Yeah, they, they've been taken out since I bought it. Damn, that's how long it's been since I've played it, really. Yeah, I think. Man, oh, God. Apparently, annoying. they're having improvised clothing, which is basically people rub- rubbing mud on their balls. <laughs> couple of leaves there we go some pants just stay away brings from new, the poison uh, ivy brings a new meaning to twig and berries mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it is basically just outlast the <laughs> simulator <laughs> oh, oh my god that would be horrifying if two players in rust got together and role played as the twins oh my god <gasps> that would be perfect Suki Yes, let's do it. (laughs) His liver and his tongue, yours, brother. I need to play Outlast. I need to play the DLC. I'm not playing that. No fucking way. I I haven't watched any streams of it, but I've heard it's like really, really gruesome. No fucking way. Man, I really enjoyed your Outlast stream. It was brilliant. Ugh. Uh, I'll be in the I'll be in the chat. I'll I'll hold your hand in the chat. It'll be fine. <laughs> 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 oh for luck. Saying me, I have Outlast and I will not play it. Uh-huh. I just, I just I avoided owning it. it for that exact reason. 
Bye. I have it. So <laughs> next time my friend comes over, who's like the biggest scaredy cat ever, I'm going to make him play it. And I'm just going to um, sit him down and uh, be like, play this game. Vin, Vin bought me Outlast for my first 24-hour stream, and I played the entire thing on the stream. I um, did. I'm yeah. sorry that I missed it, uh, because I had work in the morning. Yeah, I, I don't know whether... I just don't react to scary games the same way everyone else was, but I didn't really get scared that much. I just really liked it. Mm -hmm. It was it's exhilarating. Yeah, I think it, I think it's because I just had too much fun with the free running mechanic to actually I think get for scared. For me, where uh, Outlast is scary, is I have like a recurring nightmare of being chased, and ninety percent of that game you're being chased, so oh. it was all like too real for me. I was like, oh, can't do this. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Chris like, Walker is one of the best bad guys in any game. Oh, he's he, so good. He is. He is. Let's um. Jill Pig. Little Pig. I really like Doctor Traeger though. He was fantastic. <gasps> Traeger. Yes. Traeger was great. Nobody likes a quitter. Come on, buddy. Yeah. No, nobody likes a quitter. It's the bit hey, with the bed, and you just hear Traeger. <laughs> Traeger. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm out. I'm under the bed. Oh under yeah, the bed, I'm coming under the. Bus. Yeah, but then he starts looking under the bed, and you're like, "No, no, no! You're not allowed to do that. Why are you doing that? Stop it! Stop it!" And then he's just, "Oh, yeah, please don't do that thing." That's right. <laughs> please stop. That's right. And then the bit happens, and you're just like, "Well, I'm now closing the game and never looking at my hands." Uh, oh, oh yeah, the uh, bit. The bit. The bit. I, the bit. I the think. Bit. I think just about. All the, of all of us here know about what the bit is. You don't know the bit. Play out last. Yes. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh my god! It's it's been months since I've touched a game. Actually, I only ever played it the one time, and I played through <laughs> the whole thing in one sitting with like one break in the middle. And Squeaky Squeaky B guys was uh, such a champ in helping me mod and just being there for the entire period. <laughs> I just, God. I, I, I really, I really like Outlast, and I feel bad because I completely forgot Outlast existed when we were doing the whole game of the year stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it, if I'd remembered Outlast existed, it I would have just been hammering Outlast as my game of the year. I think the ending let it down for me. Yeah, I think story-wise, it isn't great, but. The, yeah, the the ending left it way too open to interpretation. I guess like it's not there's not a lot of closure in in the original Outlast's ending, you know. But having said that, it does carry on pretty well in the DLC because I've watched a let's play of it, mm. and it's kind of like oh, sweet. I'm played the DLC yet. The ending of the DLC gives you closure. Okay, then all right, all right. I might might buy it and play it then. Hell, I might buy it and play it tonight. <laughs> I got a three-day weekend, and it's my birthday, so why not? Well, it was my birthday yesterday. It's not. Yeah, don't milk it. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna milk it. I'm just saying that. Milky I'm a... McMilkers. <laughs> oh, Mr. Milky Mc 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 Mr. Mr. Mads Mickelson. Mr. 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 Rude. Uh, Mr. <laughs> um, buy me games internet, please. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, so, someone someone kind of bought me Dark Souls too, so I need to carry on the scum track. <laughs> What's the point in having internet celebrity if you don't use it? You, basically, like I am basically Pewdiepie, <laughs> so come on. Uh -huh. Well, basically, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of milking your birthday, your birthday is from the twenty eighth to thirty first. Oh, that's right. Oh, so long. Oh, oh, and Vin, because it's his fucking podcast. Are we allowed to talk about that? Yes. Can, can we talk about that? Because that's really um, fucking cool. If it's cool with Solon, uh, it's cool with me. Because it's like Solon has been keeping me up to date with that for quite a while, and it's really, really fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think he's okay with it. Sweet. So, well, just try and stop me. So, <laughs> um, for anyone who doesn't know, Solon is a Let's Player streamer type guy thing, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's very specific. Um, yeah. At the end of this month, he's doing a huge tour of um, West Coast and Canada as well. I think it's um, the Northwest. 
yeah, it's uh, Victoria, Seattle, Fresno, and uh, Portland. Uh, no, Victoria, Seattle, Portland, Fresno. Not Fresno? Fre Fre yeah, Fresno. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, and he's getting a load of streamers and YouTubers and Let's Players and stuff for each of them. And he's basically doing an indie band tour, but as a Let's Player. And he's doing it all up like how indie musicians would do it. It's like you can... He's got a... Is it an Indiegogo or a GoFundMe or something? I think it's a for, GoFundMe. Uh, feel yeah. free to drop the link. Yeah, uh, so long. How about it? Um, and it's like you can donate five dollars to get to get a ticket for it, and it's really fucking cool because I've never even considered the idea of a traveling let's player. Well, I I think the main issue with that would be you'd have to carry your equipment around with you if it's not going to be there already. Like that's that's yeah. the thing with traveling let's player. You're lugging your PC tower, and you're relying a lot on um, on internet connection when wherever you arrive. But uh, good for him for planning this out so well. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's a pretty huge, cool. huge, huge fucking project. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like um I have seen live let's plays before um because i went well, to uh yeah. gemucon last year okay and <laughs> sorry sorry i was about to say like <laughs> um i went to gemucon last year before the whole gemucon shenanigans went down and um <clears throat> there was dodger and there was jesse cox and they were doing a let's play of i think it's fatal frame like the wii u fatal frame or something or the Wii Fatal Frame or something. And that was really cool seeing that live, considering, you know, we do it all the time. So, I, I think it's going to be a really interesting thing to watch, having someone basically... It's a bit like Antiques Roadshow. Someone's going around the country, showing off other Let's Players, and then moving on to the next place the next day. Which mm. is really, really cool. It is, it is, and good for him. Yeah. Good, for, good for you, Solon. Yeah. This, this, is, Solon. this is a really worthy endeavor. Yeah. Yeah. I know that I know that I've got plans to do something similar in the uh, in the summer, but I basically yeah, just went. Lamps. Yeah, I'm making. Yeah, I'm, I just went right. I'm making this a lot easier because the only place I know that's going to have a decent end enough internet connection that I can get and pay for easily is my house, and then everyone could travel to me. Even though one of the people that's coming will have to bring his equipment because obviously. Whether you guys know or not, this this laptop's a piece of junk, and I'm not trying to do anything for a weekend of it. If given the choice, someone else can bring theirs. We'll use that. <laughs> sorry, sorry, so this is my fault. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> Barrelam. Barrelam. Who, who who's actually going to that? Uh, I believe in the minute it's going to be myself, <laughs> uh, Mr. Benjamin, the dev of Sky Nations, oh, that's and cool. Sexy Vince, if you've heard of him, uh, Batman <laughs> Not Liz, or, or if you've heard nickname, girl on Twitter, and oh, it'll be, <laughs> yep, and Human Can't Think if we can get the money sorted to get him over. Human Can't Think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he's off in Guernsey and has no job. But we said, you know, you're out of the way and we want to get you involved in something for once. So if we can <laughs> sort the stuff out to get you over, we'll get you over. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that, that sounds really cool. I like all these live stuff going down. Yeah, it was... Because uh, I basically thought to myself, sort of, we British folks don't really get much meetup time. Like we don't get a PAXs and our shit like that. And it gets a lot more tires to how everyone can actually meet up and do anything. Uh, uh so you guys have um was it Rezd? Right? Yeah, Rezd. Yeah. Is is that there's, the only there's Rezd and this uh no, there's like MCM that's on this weekend in London. I think they have one in Manchester as well. Uh, what is uh MCM? Uh it's our Comic Con, basically. Okay. Yeah, and we've got uh, Euro. No, not Eurogame. Yeah, we have um, Euro. Yeah, Euro Eurogame in London. Yeah. Yeah, um, because Rezd is, it's now Eurogamer Expo Rezd, 
and it's like the mini EGX before Eurogamer. Um, we we had Gemicom until shit went down with that recently, which yeah. is really interesting. Mm. There is right, there so, is also there's Game City in Nottingham in about October time, which is essentially it's, it's a bit more top. academic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, I like, go to that one. It's a week. Yeah, I think I might go on sort of one of the days to hang out with so many devs. Yeah. I know that's kind of what happens on at least some of the days. Yeah, that, that'd be really cool. Um, and sort of, yeah, as Veng said. There's insomnia. There's insomnia, but I don't. I think insomnia is a lot more sort of like the games programmer. and lands yeah. than it's sort of an expo. Minecraft tournament. Mm. I don't know how Minecraft yeah. tournaments how work. How can you even. How can we even have a tournament of Minecraft? There was a Minecraft tournament at Rezd, and and we I was I saw it and I still don't understand how you can do a Minecraft tournament at Rezd. <laughs> well, what what was the uh, conditions? Did they have to like build something or? I have no idea. It was just people playing Minecraft. <laughs> was it like you can do like little mini games of people set up like the Hunger Games and stuff like that? I could understand it if might they were have doing been that. that. It might yeah, have that, been the Hunger Games. I have that no one idea. I understand. But just watching it, it made no sense. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, we haven't we haven't got anywhere sort of necessarily for video people to meet up. And I thought, well, actually, yeah, it would be kind of cool was if was if sort of you had a video event where you actually could have people doing recordings yeah, and streaming yeah, live. live. And then I thought, I thought, well, actually, ignoring the fact that I don't have enough money to organise anything like that, <laughs> and I don't know any spaces where you could consistently get good enough internet. To sort that, I actually probably don't know enough people, not know enough people who would be interested enough that I can physically run that as a first thing. So essentially, Barrowland came out of my thought process of, mm. well, wouldn't it be cool if people got together to do a live stream? Mm. And then it turned into just, well, get yeah, some people, and then it turned into try and convince my mum, who has sort of more control over the house than I do, that it's fine to have people, which mm. her reaction to was, I'm not happy about it. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. She went, you can have it happen, but I'm not happy about it. And I went, okay. okay. <laughs> that was my internal process. Oh, shit. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but that's just figuring that out. And it's, yeah, it's kind of just... I like the idea of that. Though. I like the idea of having sort of YouTubers and streamers getting together. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, we don't really have like a playlist live or a... Um, what was the other one? SC Access or something? There was a big one which a lot of YouTubers went to a while ago. We don't really have. We don't have like a pack VidCon. either. Uh, VidCon. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. I think VidCon and Playlist Live are the same mm. thing now, aren't they? I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, got no idea. The only reason I know about VidCon is because I know one person who went to it, and my girlfriend is, well, fiance is big on LPs. I say LPs, vloggers. Those are completely different things. Why did I get the confused? Yeah. Um, so she's still yeah um like we don't have an equivalent of packs really which you know i'm kind of glad of because fuck penny okay (laughs) (laughs) but um the closest thing we had to that was gemucon and now it's done right okay right hang on if people don't know what the fuck we're talking about, Gemucon was a convention last year in Nottingham, which was really, really cool. I went to it. Um, it was a lot of fun. And then... Um, hey, Vin bought the Whistleblower DLC. Um, oh. Oh, oh, snap. Um, but yeah, after Gemucon last year, they started um, planning this year's one. And the problem was, they wanted it at a place where there wasn't a hotel, so people would have actually had to have gone and get a hotel and then travelled to it. Whereas at last year, I was three floors below where everything was happening, so I could literally yeah, just I've, I've walk been, upstairs. I've, yeah, I live quite close to Nottingham. You could easily get a hotel there. That's not a problem at all. Yeah, it was in the um, Britannia Hotel, which is kind of shit. But like I said, I was three <laughs> four floors below where everything was. So I could just roll out of bed, walk upstairs and be at the convention, which was great. Um, But they wanted it this year in... I think it was Warwick. Yeah, at the Warwick conferences. And um, the problem with that, there is no hotel, there's no accommodation. And then they also doubled the price of the tickets. (laughs) So nobody was buying stuff. 
And then, of course, that meant the company went into liquidation. People who planned and bought tickets probably won't be able to get refunds. People have booked flights from other countries to go there. Yeah, and it's I, um, all just gone completely fucked over. I actually read the news reports on that. Um, the company itself had to default on all fees. Uh, so ticket refunds were not guaranteed, but any leftover funds from paying off their debts and uh, and paying off credits and stuff like that would have been allotted, I guess, to as many fans and ticket buyers as they could, but uh, there were no promises. Yeah, it, it's a really, really messed up situation, but... Um... It's like a lot of people went last year just because Jesse Cox and Dodger went, and that's why I went. Um, and yeah. They were like the headline things for this year as well. And what Jesse said is that he's going to have an event in London. I thought, uh, I, I thought oh, yeah, he's just going to go yeah. and be like, come hang out, isn't he? He's yeah, just like he's, a... he's off his own bat with his own money saying, I'm going to do an event in London, which doesn't make much sense considering London's considerably further away than where Jemmy Con actually would have been, but it's better than nothing. And it's yeah, like really it's, it seems to them for doing that. It seems to be everything's in London and Res is like one of Res and Game City are like the two things that aren't in London. Yeah, See, like, and I only found out about them, yeah. so. I only found out about Res like a month before it happened and I was like, well, there's no way how long I'm gonna be able to sort that out. I've got other yeah. things I need to be paying for. Yeah, I got um, a, I got a press code for Res, which was awesome. <laughs> and Game City, yeah. Game City obviously same sort of thing happened last time where I just I hadn't got the funds for it because I was still looking for a job. Whereas this year I can actually sort of say, yeah, I'll have this day off or whatever. But there's so many, there's so many things that happen in London. I'm like, well, it's quite expensive to travel. Yeah, you know, London is a universe. I'm like, there's, there's a whole other cult- country in England. It's not just London. Scotland. <laughs> Even if you put Yorkshire. It in, I could maybe travel up there. I'd rather also stay away from Yorkshire. <gasps> <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Shots fired. Oh, no, you <laughs> did, girl. <laughs> oh, yes, I did, girl. <laughs> oh, fucking Brummie. I don't want to go to fucking Yorkshire. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. <laughs> that was my scouse one and then Brummie. Mm-hmm. Oi, oi, mate. <laughs> fucking Brummie. Was that supposed to be Jardy? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Vin has no idea what's going on. I have not a clue. This is basically East Coast versus West Coast going on now. This is Northerners versus <laughs> the Midlands. over the joint. You mean the South, because there's no such thing as the Midlands. You get past Manchester and you're still in the Oh, I live in the Midlands. <laughs> oh, oh, snap. <laughs> oh, we are completely different to the South. We, we we, are you really? I'm not a southerner, and I'm not a northerner. I live in the middle of it. Yeah, I'm not a northerner, I'm not a southerner, I'm just miserable. Ooh. <laughs> I, live, I, live fur- I live from the point in England where you are the furthest from the sea in any direction. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> Granted, Wait, it's if this still is not that if far, but... mid- Midwest in America, then I don't know what is. Yeah, you are, you are basically well the mid- Midwest. La- yeah, the Midwest is all farmland. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm it's... Midwest as well. Why am I saying you're Midwest? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also Midwest. <laughs> Technically, I'm in the East Midlands, so I've been oh, mid east. Oh, you're scum! But... <laughs> you're worse than New Yorkshire. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. <laughs> Just turning on everyone, don't mind me. And fuck you, Vin! <laughs> Wait, yeah, what? Vin! <laughs> yeah, You're not even English! Fuck Vin! Well, you're, you're damn, way yeah. too Western. Yeah, d- d- damn me for not being English, right? <laughs> there you've been a different time zone. We're in this is starting the to sound like a UKIP broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. I've been hijacked by the British. Please send help. <laughs> the British are coming. The British are coming. I, I need cheeseburgers, fireworks, <laughs> freedom, and <laughs> freedom. <laughs> everyone starts. Everyone starts singing the national anthem. It's even got the <laughs> Queen in it. Oh my God! Uh, if you do it, I will cut it out and put it in part of the extras video. Monsters <laughs> 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 
I'm about to help you. Oh, that's oh. That's their Wait. actual anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I, I would totally, okay. I would totally put. Yeah. Actually, can we, no, no, I, I can't do I, that. I, I got, right, I'll find it for you. Hold up. Thank you. Wait, Eniko apparently thought Parlock was Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> How about it, Parlock? Eh? Oh, it's, oh, yeah. oh, it's all Canadian. I'm, I'm, I'm a hosiery. I'm a hosiery. <laughs> Those Mounties, eh? <laughs> How do you spell Canada? C A A A. I'm really sorry if anyone's <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> I'm not, this shit's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we all laugh, laugh, because we help mold those countries. Oh my god, I just want to say that we tried to talk about video games. <laughs> we tried so hard. <laughs> we lost a viewer. <laughs> we lost a viewer. <laughs> Alright, what is this? All the points, hell yeah. We, we, we talked about video games for a longer amount of time than was expected. That <laughs> was completely... Oh, oh, no. Trying to um, drag his kicking and screaming back on topic. Yes. <laughs> kicking and screaming. Uh, oh, thank you, Max. Yes, please. Okay. What is that? Red Lux version? The Redux versions of Metro 2030. Oh, well, I, I saw a screenshot of that the other I day, I think actually. it's bullshit. You know, there's like the remastered versions of like The Last of Us and Tomb Raider and stuff like that. Why would you need to remaster Games that those, don't need though? a remastered yeah. version. Yeah. Well, they're doing that for Metro, except they're also putting Metro 2033 on Sony consoles this time as well. Hmm. The thing is... Metro 2033 was only on 360 and PC. Was it really? Yeah, it yeah. was. Yep. Oh. And then Metro Last Light was on all three. But it's a yeah. bit like Mass Effect, where we finally get to play it on Sony consoles. I love yeah, those games. Yeah, but the games. problem is... Really good. Is that games like Tomb Raider and games like Last of Us, they didn't... Well, specifically with Tomb Raider, they didn't actually release the upgraded version on PC. Because we didn't need it, because PC, basically. Um, so, it's like, they're now releasing Metro Last Light and Metro 2033 Redux on PC, and it's still hecker expensive. It's like, something like 20 quid to get both of them. Which makes no sense, because it's like the Deus Ex Human Revolution director's cut, people who owned it got 75% off. And that actually changed the game and didn't just boost the graphics like the Redux does. Yeah, it's just a ca uh, cash grab, isn't it, really? Mm. Mm. It, it, no, it, it really is. I mean, if they were remastering a, an older generation game, yeah, sure. If they could remaster the original Deus Ex, I might actually be able to play it well. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they should remaster. They should remaster the old Silent Hills and not butcher all the friggin' voiceovers and change things. and <laughs> make me sad. That would we be nice. Stop remastering games and just let people play the old ones. It's See, easier said than done. It's like they, they tried. They tried to redo Thief and that thing that well. If they can, if they can just HD some of the games that I missed from PS2, that'd be fine. Yeah, just do it with bundled in mods, because it's like you can get um, like System Shock 2 looking pretty good with mods. Just have them pre-installed, bundled in. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the problem there would be like, which mods would they choose to bundle in? Because they're going to be selling it with the game, right? Yeah. But it's like, GOG, they heavily promote, like, what mods you'd want to make a game looking as good as possible. It's like, they've got a whole guide on modding Deus Ex, Thief, System Shock 2, all that sort of stuff. Mm. And it's like, they're already advocating these mods, why not just bundle them in with it? Even it's just like the optional downloads that you can get on GOG. So it's mm. like on GOG you can get like, click here to download the wallpapers or the soundtrack or something like that. Just have on there, click here to download this mod, which will make it better. That would be making sense and the games industry doesn't do that very often. <laughs> That's why they need us. <laughs> can, yes. can, I just, can I just say what needs to be said? Deus Ex is an ugly looking game. It was ugly when it came atrocious. out. Came out in 2000. Yeah, I know uh, it did. Was I, it? I played it the, like I peaked the PS2 okay. version up and I just went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> when I played it, because I was like, this is, <laughs> this is horrendous. What the fuck is this? 
the controls are so I guess Ven just trying to say wonky. Yeah, there we go. But it's such a good yeah, time. Like, I, I did the thing that I always do whenever the whenever any game asks me to make my own decisions about at the start of a game, which is I picked what I thought would be useful, which did not suit me how I was playing it in the slightest bit. So I had like a I think it was the silenced thing where you can stealth, and I was like, I've got no ammo. Is and it? everyone's already seen me, and I can't fight, <laughs> oh. and everything looks really horrible, oh, and God. the game plays badly, and there's nothing here that makes me want to play more. And then <laughs> oh I was like, no! <laughs> hating myself for not enjoying this game. Everyone's like, "Yes, yeah, like one of the best games ever." And I'm like, "Why?" And that's why I've never played Deus Ex properly. I, I don't think Deus Ex is ever the one I played. I played Human Revolution, and I quite enjoyed that. Mm. I enjoyed it until so, the first boss. Yeah, the bosses were a bit. Yeah. yeah, and the ending was very. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But the rest I, of the game I enjoyed. I, I liked the the Deus Ex parts of Deus Ex: Human Revolutions, but it's it's pretty obvious that the um, the boss fights were kind of shoehorned in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did it right in the Missing Link, though. If have I, have either of you guys played the uh, no. Missing Link DLC? No, I haven't. The boss fight in that is exactly what you would expect of a of a Deus Ex game. It's not a one on one confrontation where you're basically trapped in a room with the person. It's this whole open factory floor with roving guards, uh, robots, um, places, plenty of places to hide and sneak around if you wanted to. And the boss doesn't actually have hit points; he just registers as another character. So if you headshot oh, cool. him, you headshot him. You know. Oh, is that the um, missing link? Yes, boss? it's the missing link yeah. boss. That one yeah. they did really, really well. Yes, like, when they, I when they I... used that one as the um, template for the um, director's cut bosses. Mm-hmm. So, so when when they when I first played that level, I was like, "Holy shit! This is this is completely different from how they did it in the in the main game," and I really, really liked it. Because that way, that gave me the option, because I was playing the, um, the Factory Zero achievement, which means you use no weapons, you use no augmentations, no boosts of any kind. So I was basically crawling on my hands and knees throughout all the air ducts and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and if I got stuck into a, a standard boss fight with nothing, I would have just, you know, I would have turned off all my computers and never touched the game again. Because there's no way you can do that. That's basically why I was with the first boss in Human Revolution. That's why I've never touched the game again since then. Because oh. I was like partly stealth in it, and I was not in any way equipped to deal with a dude with a chain gun. Oh yeah, that boss was yeah. so bad. So I was like, yeah. And if if you don't have um, and then you got Muscle Man. Yeah. Oh god, that one. Yeah, no. the Muscle Man. It was so bad. What's but to be I fair, think- um, most boss designing games are opposed to. I didn't ask for this. I never, <laughs> I never asked for this. I never asked for this. I think I forgave a lot I about a uh, Human Revolution purely because of the aesthetics and the universe. That's quite a big thing for me. If I can get into, you know, the style of it or the, the like, the little universe, then I'm willing to overlook some things. But the boss fights are just too much. Bosses like, are normally oh. bosses are normally my sticking point with games. Like I never finished Infamous because the final boss just kicked my ass for hours and hours. Um, and I was like, it's all cool, Kessler, slash, you know, spoiler. But, yeah, you're a dick, and you're <laughs> trashing me repeatedly. And it's, as much as I was enjoying this game, you've ruined it for me now. And it happens in so many games. And either I have to LP it, so I force myself through it, like with Catherine, where there were so many levels I got stuck on, but I kind of just had to stick with it. Because otherwise the LP would have finished. Or if I'm playing something where they've actually designed the boss as well. Because the Arkham games have spoiled me on boss design. Wait, what? The Arkham games? The Arkham, yeah. the one, the, the Arkham games that are notorious for having poorly designed boss fights <laughs> spoiled <laughs> you on boss fights. Yeah. More, well, so, more uh, so Arkham City than Arkham Asylum. Oh, Arkham, oh, Arkham Asylum kind of has shitty bosses, but Arkham City's yeah. bosses, yeah. The penguin fight in Arkham City is awesome. I think and it's the, the Mr. Freeze um, boss fight, which is basically me going, right, that's what I want from games. Oh, the Mr. Freeze boss fight was scary. That was, like, legit scary. What I liked about that was the fact that the oh, game basically went, you're is, Batman, figure it out. 
Is is that yeah. the one where he's basically like the Terminator and you have to like yeah. sneak around? Yeah, you oh, have to. Oh, that's have to a use, good fight. You can, each, you can only use each method of taking him down once. Then he goes, um, "Ah, Batman, I know what you did," and then just like stops you from doing it again. Mm, well, Wait, it, it, you can shoot yourself in the foot really quickly by doing things there, but it no, no it makes sense because like Mister Freeze is a genius. He's he's at least you know almost as smart as Batman is. So if you're if you're gonna use techniques, it makes sense that he's like, oh, I'll just counteract it. Oh, you tried to shut down my suit. Here you go. You can't do it again. Yeah, yeah. That, like that's that's what I want from AI in games. Never mind from AI in boss fights. Is I want stealth games to learn from that. Where like if a, if they figure out a dude's you know hanging from the roof, then they will stop you from using the roof mm. and things like that. I thought that yeah. was good game design and like the penguin boss fight was good. The two face boss fight with Catwoman is a bit of a pain in the ass, but it kind of is what yeah. it is. I think that's uh, why the um, Big Daddies and the Handymen in the Bioshock series are kind of important for that sort of thing. Because they are an example of adaptive AI, because they do change how they work depending on how you fight them. So it's like, if, it, like in Bioshock Infinite, if you're using the sky, ra- sky hook a lot and on your sky lines a lot, they will start electrifying the sky rail to get you off it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like if you, it's like because I cheese Bioshock a lot because I play it a lot. Um, it's like if you, a lot of enemies, I just found you can kill them by just sitting on the skyhook and then pouncing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. yeah. But That's, you yeah. can't do that with the handyman because they'll they'll jump up onto the sky rail and the skyline, sorry, and electrify it. So you have to get off or else it'll do damage to you. I didn't. I didn't mind uh, Assassin's Creed for the fact that it slowly basically forced you to be better at combat. Like, it doesn't necessarily have adaptive AI, but the fact that in Assassin's Creed 2, they basically went, well, here's the grunts. Here's, like, mid-tier dudes that can kind of fight you. Here's heavy dudes that you're going to have to fucking think about. Because, like, I remember the first time I played it, I just went, oh, shit, there's a heavy smoke bomb, and then just stabbed him with a hidden blade. And then, like, the second and third times I went through, I, I essentially learned the combat enough that I could just beat the game without buying any weapons and just playing barehanded. Because yeah, I eventually miss- figure out Eventually, Sorry. you figure out well the heavies kind of go, like they're going with the big axes. But if you're not fighting with a sword, you're fine. You could just counter them, steal their axe, get them. Yeah, I do miss when Assassin's Creed used to try and be a stealth series. Yeah. Like when it when it first started, the big thing about it was this idea of social stealth. Mm-hmm. Like you'd hide in crowds yep. and you'd get disguises and you'd eavesdrop and you'd like bribe people and all that sort of thing. And that was a huge thing considering. We'd had so long of Metal Gear and Splinter Cell, which were pure, hidden stealth. Yep. And then, as they realised people weren't actually playing like that, they were just free-running everywhere, they kind of got rid of that, or they try and sort of hamstring it in with the really bullshit eavesdropping missions in Assassin's Creed 3 and that sort of thing. When I haven't I haven't even got to adult Connor in Assassin's Creed 3, because I just went, no. It's so oh. boring. <laughs> is it? Is it that I bad? like Assassin's Creed. I, I really like Assassin's Creed 3, but the mission design is kind of bullshit at times. Connor is just not offensive. interesting to me at all either. I just I can't... Think, I've been yeah. hearing so much about that. I've never played any of the... I've never played Assassin's Creed 3 or 4. I, I've played two... Uh, I played one a little bit on the 360 back home. Um, but I don't know anything about the, the character of Connor. Like, how how bad is he? I just find him to be like, utterly bland, and I d- he's just—I don't know. It's—he I mean, seems the to have of- no personality, really. <laughs> the Star Wars, oh. I mean, like it's the American Revolution, so I don't really give a shit in the first place. That's right. It was jokingly referred to as a Assassin's Creed Kill the English Edition, or something yeah, like that. Like yeah, the, Ren- the Renaissance makes sense in a historical context when yep. stuff's happening. Yep. And the Crusades makes st- sense as a historical context when stuff's happening. Yep. Assassin's Creed 3 was, oh yeah, let's beat the American Revolution because fuck it, Americans are like it. Well, yeah, exactly. I, the Renaissance and the Crusades were world- world-changing events. They were big things. Creed, and then it's just like... Or well, people like pirates. So, there you yeah. Go. Yeah. The Navy I, stuff I, Assassin's Creed 3 was good. There you go, there's some more. I, I don't know. I, like, I think Assassin's Creed like Revelations, basically 2.75... It took you all the way to the Ottoman Empire, right? I yeah. feel like they could have benefited by going further east. 
Not saying yep. this just because I'm Asian, just saying. I would... Re it's like a lot of people really want there to be a Japanese Assassin's Creed with ninjas and stuff. And it's like... I would rather them carry on exploring less used places like the American Revolution, like the Renaissance, like... How about China? Four Kingdoms it's China would be awesome. Dynasty Warriors is done. They already... They already said with when they were making Assassin's Creed Two. I remember reading an interview about it in I think it was a PlayStation magazine, might be the official one. And they were saying, in fact, it might have been Games TM. I don't even fucking know anymore. It was years ago. But I remember them saying, "Well, what we do for settings is we try and pick a setting that's his that historically makes sense as this world-changing event when politics and society and history and culture and everything changes, radically changes from that point on." So when they were going, "Yeah, we'll make Assassin's Creed Three, I was like, "Right, so." Reasonably, but that, for this to be the story it is, it's either going to be the Industrial Revolution, the French Revolution, one of the World Wars, or the Cold War. And they went, you know what? No, let's do the American Revolution. That makes sense. Kind of in, well, it is kind of important considering a big thing about Assassin's Creed 2 and its arc was the discovery of the New World. But to me, if you were going to do that, then you do the Civil War. Because the American Revolution doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. But, but the big thing thematically in Assassin's Creed is this idea of the freedom. assassins being about freedom whereas the Templars are about control which would make sense with the Civil War considering the whole slavery thing but yeah. then it makes sense, it makes got... sense in the Industrial Revolution as well because it's about sort of the way that everyone ended up in the cities under control of the companies and it makes sense to the French Revolution or they wouldn't be fucking doing it now yeah but I think it also <laughs> it does sense. make sense to the American Revolution because you had have, you have the Brits heavily heavily taxing America and that sort of thing and then you had like the whole thing with the Templars trying to control the new world still. So it, it did kind of fit in. It's just, I think... With, with all the best women in the world, I don't think they should have added in the very kind of alright-ish done Native American sub-story to that as well. Yeah. Because you've already, you've already got the story of the Brits versus the Americans. And then they're adding in that third layer to it with Connor being Native American, which was done really well. I'm not saying that was done badly. Wasn't, it's like they, um, wasn't Connor like half and half? Uh, yeah, his, his father's English. Yeah, because yeah. then you get the excuse of his four chapters, so about two or three hours at the start of the game where you play as a dude that you think you might play as for the rest of the game, but no. Yeah, and then when it's revealed like what he is, you're like, ooh, you son of a bitch. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, I guess that's kind of cool. Or we could have just gone on with Connor. But it's mm. like when they were making Connor. Like chapter, you, yeah, you're like chapter 7 and Connor's still not an adult and you're like, this is pushing a bit now. Yeah. And Assassin's Creed 2 set up where you played as Ezio before he was an assassin. You but you played Ezio the second assassin after his for like an hour and a half. And you just meet his family, then stuff kicks off, then you become an assassin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spend the whole game training. Whereas yep. Assassin's Creed 3 goes, right, here's his dad doing some stuff. Here's his dad sailing. Here's his dad <laughs> coming into America. Coming here's... to America. <laughs> here's Connor's <laughs> mum. Yeah, here's how here's they met. Connor's a kid playing hide and seek. Here's some English people trying to find him. Here's those English people burning his village down. Here's him <laughs> being a bit pissed off as a teenager. Here's him meeting some people. Here's him finding out his dad's a Templar. Here's him becoming an. Here's him meeting some people who are assassins. Here's him continuing to meet those people, and then eventually here's him being a teenager joining the assassins. And then he's still gonna have to train to be an assassin. And I was like, nope. You've driven me along for too fucking long, Ubisoft. <laughs> 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 no, I think the really cool thing though with Connor, well, with how they did Connor was that, because he's... Is, it, is he meant to be Mohawk or something, I think? Um, no. Yeah, I think he's meant to be Mohawk. Uh, apparently, when they were doing that, as part of Mohawk names, because everyone is unique, they decided not to trademark uh, Regina Gay Dune because it made no sense considering every Mohawk name was unique anyway. So it's mm. like, they did do a... They, they always have done a lot to make sure it's culturally correct, at um, least. Yeah, he's, he's Mohawk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the wiki right now. Yeah. It's like they didn't trademark Raduna Gay Dune because it would have made no sense. <laughs> I, I, I like how you said it two different ways each time. <laughs> I'm, just looking, I'm looking at that name now and I'm like, how? 
How does that make a word? Well, in the in the game, they always like Radun again, <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> Make that three. British accent. So it's uh, again. I think it's uh, Ratona Keron or something like that. But um, yeah. I always go Ratona Keron in the game. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that makes you sound like is the kid from Metal Gear Rising. I've never played Metal Gear anything. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the kid in there. The, the um, me neither, pal. Eh. It's like this little kid, and he's got like this incredibly indecipherable thing. So you have the sub, <laughs> and they have subtitles for the subtitles, just so you can understand what he's saying. <laughs> That's right, they do. I think oh, he's. Is that um... the one where like the subtitles are spelled in like really broken English, like it was spelling yeah. it phonetically? Yes, yes, they are. I think <laughs> he's. Um... I think he's. What is that kid? Is he Mal? He's not Malay. He's like Spanish South. He's something. like. He's South American or something. I think. Yeah, something like that. Alright, I gotta go look this up. Continue talking! I need to know. What the hell? Why was the two sets of subtitles needed for that, though? Well, one was... Because Metal Gear. Gear. Is well, his yeah. Dialect, then you have to understand what he's saying in his dialect. <laughs> <laughs> put into a further level of English so you can understand as a reader. <laughs> Metal Gear is basically just watch Hideo Kojima have a massive erection over how meta he is. He, he's, he's desperate need of an editor. The game's doing it. It's like, yeah. the, kid, the kid's name is George, and he's Mexican. <laughs> That's Mexican. Okay. That was not Mexican. That's Can not we just, even... like, crowdsource to pay someone to grab Kojima by the shoulders, and whenever he comes up with, like, a stupid idea, just shake him and go, no. Think about this. Because <laughs> that would have been Platinum Games saying, oh yeah, let's, let's put in this kid. <laughs> It's coming from the studio that have like yeah. the made van. Bayonet, Bayonet cover, but... 3 is just George. <laughs> <laughs> it's just George and like his giant mech. That's it. <laughs> Dude, it's Kojima. George in a Metal Gear. Yeah, Kojima has such a hard on for big giant robots. Like, in, it's, if you look through all of his games, the percentage of it being giant robots has just increased. Like, just increased per iteration of every game. To Metal be fair, though, giant robots. That's true. Metal Gear Solid 1, you have Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid 2, you have Metal Gear and Metal Gear Ray. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, you have the Shagohod. You have the Shagohod, you have... Um, uh, you That's have the, the only one the I actually know, because I watched Solon play that one, and then after watching him... Because he did an entire stream where he played every Metal yeah. Gear Solid game. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I watched Metal Gear Solid 3, and then after that, I was just so done with Hide Hideo Kojima, I just sort of gave up and zoned out for the rest of them. In a, in a space twist of logic, you have to, if you want to play the story in the correct order, you have to play Metal Gear Solid 3, three yep. Metal, Gear, Metal Gear 1, no, it's not even that, it's Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal yeah, Gear Portable, if you want to go that far, Peace yeah, Walker, Peace Walker. Then, then, then it's uh, Metal, the Metal Gear, Gear. Metal, yeah. Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid 1, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Rising. Yeah. And then Ground Zeroes <laughs> somewhere in there. Yeah, Ground Zeroes is after this walker. Oh, Ground Zero. Fuck knows where Ground, yeah. ground Zero just likes to sell to me. Let's let's not talk about it. Do you want to talk yeah. about ground, ground Zero? Let's not. Let's not. Let's, I've let's... never played it. I don't actually care about Metal Gear, so if you want to talk about it, fine by me. If you, want, if you want to back off, if you want to back off the weirdness of Kojima, then you just you just walk over to Metal Gear Rising and you just go, "Oh, cool." The people that made Vanquish and Bayonetta have done whatever on earth they do here, and they have like a giant boss that's a colossal ant. Then you realise he's a senator inside <laughs> name, and then as the senator comes out, he goes, he like just beefs up and beats the shit out of you, and then he says, "Nano machine, son." And, and then like you have this colossal. And like, then he, he goes into this whole like Freedom America. America speech, like seriously. Yeah, he's he's like those crypto conspiracy people that are like, the only way we can save America is by having war with everyone. And then you're like, okay, and then like he beats the shit out of you, and then you just go crazy, and then Blade Wolf gets the shit kicked out of him, and then he throws you a sword, and then suddenly you're able to fight this guy, and then you have to cut through rocks in this bullshit way, and then you <laughs> fight him, and you're like, cool. It sounds like a parody <laughs> of a Metal Gear game. But it it's is like an hour-long boss fight, and you're like, "Oh god!" <laughs> it's just cutscenes and unbeatable bits, and cutscenes for like half an hour, and you're mm -hmm. like, "What?" I. Yep. Mm -hmm. You paid money for that. Oh yeah. I buy on release, thank God. But yeah. 
Okay, well, how about we talk um, about something else? <laughs> <laughs> streaming. I think Parlock wanted to lead a discussion on streaming, or oh, dang, you... <sighs> no. <laughs> We don't have to. <laughs> you can. What's the Kojima? I, I will happily talk, but you lead. <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. I'll lead to keep you in check. All right. So uh, I think Suki, uh, you you're pretty much the newest one to streaming, right? Or uh... yeah, I I don't stream very often, and um, I, I stopped for a while because of uni. Like with all my channel, it's pretty been dead except for Saint Row. But I, I used to stream a bit of Daisy and like. Rust and stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty quiet because I'm pretty new, so I only have like three or four people watching at a time. So, you know, <laughs> I don't really. It's interesting. It's a good way instead of being like sitting for like three hours and pumping out some videos, mm. you kind of just as you go along, it's just a. It's a thing. <laughs> I, actually, I think the first stream I saw of you was on uh, Twitch. You were playing Attack on Titan, actually. Oh god, yeah, yeah. No, I might not be playing that again. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember that. That was I was. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, you were playing. Um, it was good. It was good. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I I suck so badly at that game. It, it's uh, so hard. I th I think you and Parlock should play together sometime. <laughs> You. I've seen you guys playing that on stream, and you're like pretty competent. I'm just like, well, I'm just gonna slam myself into a tree. Oh, and there's a titan, and I'm dead. I oh. I pull off some magical shit playing that game. I'm so incompetent in that game. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I have no shame admitting that. I'm utterly incompetent playing Attack on Titan, and I need Parlock to like bail me out. I just I just sort of carry everyone. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Like as soon as a as soon as a titan starts chasing me, I'm launching my ass. I'm climbing up a tree. <laughs> yeah. Like, get high, get high. Oh my god, no. And then and then Parlo looks like, okay, hang on, let me take care of him. Whoop. What's up, guys? <laughs> Whoosh slam. And that's it. And I'm and even when I try to attack a a, a titan, I'm like hurling myself <laughs> meters, <laughs> kilometers beyond it. Because I, I let go of one of the hooks and I just fling myself. <laughs> <laughs> I always try and be clever and like hook onto the back of the neck and then just zoom up and cut them. And then they always end up turning around and I fly straight into their mouths. <laughs> yeah. The trick is and to I'm go like, over the top of their head. I can't uh, do that. Get up over their head, it, it works every time. I can't do that. I just, I just can't. I just can't. <laughs> I, I have to go around the back and like climb up their legs. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then zip up, and then boom. <laughs> Go ahead. I would totally be that person in the anime that just gets squished by like a hand. We're we're basically extras. Yeah. <laughs> we're would totally be the extras. Yeah. Pa Parlock would be I'm the main hero. Zipping around being Levi. Parlock's just like Mikasa, stand on a roof, like looking at everyone, going, "You idiots." <laughs> I am strong. <laughs> yep. I yep. am the strongest. You are not strong. I am a bad character. Ha 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 ha. Well, what were you saying about uh, Mikasa being a Mary Sue character? Yeah, Mikasa is written. Fuck, fuck everyone goes. It's she's called Mikasa. No, Mikasa. Um, sorry. Wait, okay. what? Wait, people when they've dubbed the gay when they've dubbed the anime now people are really bitching about how they pronounce Mikasa's name. Uh huh. It's like apparently they pronounce it completely wrong, but it's like. I don't care. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Put it in English. Yeah, it's like it's Mikasa, not Mikasa. Um, but yeah, the whole point of Mikasa in the anime is that she is basically the the strong one. She is the one who can kill all of the titans magically by just zipping around and being a badass. And then, and then suddenly, oh, she's got such a such a traumatic childhood, and she's so moody and miserable, and she's the so strong, silent type, and she's so perfect, and all the all the other soldiers love her, and she's in the elite squad, and it's like, I just want you to get eaten, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, I want though. you to go away. You would just that would be great, story-wise. It would. It absolutely would. set her up would. to be this perfect uh, soldier, and then all of a sudden, bam, she's dead, and then everyone's like, oh, damn. 
Oh shit, now we were supposed to fight. Oh man. And I don't like Eren. I don't like him. No. I don't actually like any of the characters in Attack on Titan. <laughs> no. I don't actually know why I like Attack on Titan so much. I just I don't like any of the characters. I don't like one of the big twists in it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I think I just like it because of the people getting killed. <laughs> it's got good action in it. I'll give it that. Yeah. Interspersed by so many shots of people just crying and going, ah, no, I need it to save all really the humanity. Cool idea. Oh, yeah, Sasha. Sasha. I forgot yeah. about Sasha. I like Sasha. I, I like Sasha. She just eats, and I'm digging it. Mm. Oh, yeah, oh, that character, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, potato. Yeah, 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 yeah. The was it sweet potato, right? I think it was just a pineapple potato. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when when you first actually told me about this game, uh, Attack on Titan, I thought it was an actual like, oh, you purchased the game. I never knew it was like a fan made creation. Was it made in Flash or something? Uh, Unity. Unity. Wow. Oh, that's I mean, right. It's post- um, it's um, um, what is it? Unity web browser, right? Yeah, I, I just posted the link in the chat because I'm playing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The game reminds me of Guns, and I have no idea why. Guns? I just like, Guns I with just a really Z. Like... Oh yeah, Guns. From like EG, where you had to be like a badass with a sword, otherwise you fucking sucked. Yeah. And they're like, why aren't you butterflying enough? And you're like, I don't even know what that is. Don't <laughs> please don't ask me to do that. <laughs> Please don't shout at me. <laughs> like, I want to use guns. I don't want like to try and run a building and a butterfly. Because <laughs> it's basically people like, that didn't have to like play guns. the game using guns. The people that did just like spinning around in circles with blades, blocking everyone's shots, killing you. And you're like, cool. Oh, um, I wanted to ask you guys about the concept of like a default streaming game. Like, um, basically. I hate it. Absolutely despise it. It's one of the worst things. Well, I was just wondering, like, if if you're not playing a story game, or if you're not, if you don't have anything planned, well, why not have a default streaming game? Because all it ever turns into is this one game that everyone's playing at the same time, which is one of the most painfully boring experiences on Twitch. I.e., like so last true. summer when everyone streamed Spelunky all the time, and yeah. before that when everyone streamed Dark Souls. Well, how about like personalized? I don't mind it games being. Like if, personalized. Like if you I, if if you it's... were if you were to pick a uh, default game what is just for you, like you're you're the only one who ever plays it, you know, which would it be? Like that kind of thing. Feasibly then I don't mind as much, but I still prefer the idea of if you're gonna stream, get some variety out of it. Like, oh grant, I streamed a single game for seventy nine friggin' hours. But mm. I didn't stream it again. No, you probably, mostly because I'd play it for seventy nine hours and I'm completely sick and tired of it by that point <laughs> and it's completely blowing a week of my time playing that game and sleeping but it's just I there's so many games in this world I can't see why you'd want to spend all your time playing a single one yeah unless, and then there's the risk of, <clears throat> yeah, unless there's you're the risk of getting stuck now it's <laughs> then there's like the risk as well of everyone coming to our channel for just the one thing and then you'll get like the idiots going oh I want you to do this don't do anything when's else when's disco dodgeball yeah oh my god God, <laughs> that, that so many times I it's like because when um, some people used to stream a lot of Disco Dodgeball, for quite a while after people kind of slowed down on it, people would just constantly ask when's Disco Dodgeball, and it got so irritating. Hey, Paul, when's Disco Dodgeball? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's like I don't really have a default game. I just go through so- like cravings for games a lot it's like this week i've been streaming a lot of chivalry and it's like i hadn't actually ever really played chivalry <clears> until <throat> i played it with um ice bear on his um lime stream slot okay and then it's like i played it on that and, and i got the bug for it and then yeah I you, have been, you have been streaming that. yeah but it's like that isn't going to be the only game i ever stream it's just the only game i want to stream at the moment Mm-hmm. I'd say Chivalry is a good game for streaming as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's... I'd never stream a story-based game. It, unless it's in, like Outlast, which I'm planning to do in one fell swoop, like I did on the 24-hour thing. I don't think I'd ever those... really oh, yeah. stream a story-based game, because yeah. there's no guarantee I'm ever actually going to finish a game on a stream. 
And I'd like oh, yeah, to see yeah. that closure. Um, I, think there, I think there's some value in just playing a game from start to finish on stream. Like, I've done a fair few games like that, and it's it's nice. It's a decent enough experience. I mean, I've mostly only done short games, but I can see how if you had the time to set aside, there might be value in doing a longer one. But past that, yeah, story on streams is a bit... Which I think is why people would play, like, Spelunky so much, considering, you know, that was people, the thing that had just come out. Roblox. Yeah. I, I think my main uh, concern about playing longer storied game is that the audience isn't there isn't going to be there for the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like if they're if they're watching it, say if they're if they're looking for a, a let's play type stream, you're not going to be there for the, for every time I stream it, or you know you know if it if it happens to be a thirty something hour game like uh, Deus Ex, you're not going to be there for the whole thirty hours. Like, uh, some days I might go for a four-hour stream, other days I might go for six. You're not going to be there the whole time. Yeah. And then you're relying on... Is having like an organized point when you stream, which is not something I particularly agree with either, but I get why people do it. And I think it's also the point of sort of uploading what you stream to YouTube, which I also don't do because the internet restricts me a great deal on the, con the quality of the content compared to what I'd like to record. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Sorry, I just wiped my microphone. No, that's cool. We didn't hear anything. Yeah. Um, but I I had a point and it just completely gone. Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. I, I like two words in then and realized. Wait, I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> well, as a oh, viewer, yeah. straight. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, I was thinking it's like when an episode, a new episode of a Telltale game comes out you'll get a lot of people streaming it straight away because they want yep. to play it straight away. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. you know, I kind of want to play that for myself. I'm not going to watch your stream because I don't want it to be spoiled for me. Whereas with YouTube on Let's Plays, you could play that as soon as it comes out and it wouldn't actually affect anyone because be, they could be watching it months later. Yeah. Whereas with yeah. a stream, you uh, have to be there there and then because, you know, who actually watches Twitch VODs? Um, I, think, I think the thing with I think the thing with Twitch, though, is there's an element of the same kind of sort of small number of factors that you can get big with YouTube but people care a great deal more about the speed that they get big on Twitch so everyone tries to stream a game when it comes out as soon as they can so they can yeah, try and get people watching it's, it's, there's it's, a lot of but, stuff that goes on on Twitch I don't yeah. know. we've had this conversation before mm. like, yeah I, I think I think this is where Vin was planning to lead me to I'm a bit scared <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I'll be right here to moderate. Um, <sighs> I'll be here to keep you on track and prevent you from ranting. <laughs> oh, let, let me rant. Just don't let me name names. <laughs> oh yeah, no names. Well, that <laughs> one, that That's one will be entirely on you, young man. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck that guy, Supervin. He does all the shit stuff that I hate. He doesn't even <laughs> play I don't know why I'm on his chat. But it's like there's so much stuff. It's like for anyone who doesn't know, I quit streaming for about a month and a half and I was planning on just sort of quitting indefinitely because I do not like Twitch. I do not like Twitch culture. I do not like a lot of stuff that streamers do on Twitch. I don't like how audiences act on Twitch. So I just quit streaming altogether and was like, fuck that. I'm just going to focus on YouTube. And it's like a lot of... It's like because I'd quit for a month and a half, I had a lot of time to actually think about exactly what I dislike. And I managed to narrow it down to, to raiding and sub emotes specifically were two big things that I really do not like about Twitch. Because they are both... They're both self-serving, but they're self-serving in a way where people can plausibly deny that it's self-serving and still look good, which bothers me a lot. So it's like, hey, sub emotes... I'm just providing a service for someone who who subscribes to me. These people want it, so I will give it to them. When in reality, it's like, okay, it's a walking billboard for someone else's channel that Indeed. other people are going into other people's chats and using to advertise your, your channel. It's like, there's a lot of streamers who, I'd, who I've only ever heard of through sub emotes. Um, I, I think I'm happy to get sub emotes. I just don't want to use them much elsewhere unless the streamer is fine with that. I think that's yeah. I mean, in it's their a difficult chat, thing to know outright. 
Yeah, like in their I'm... own chat's completely chat fine, but I don't want to go around and see sub emotes of other streamers in other people's streams because that's just kind of advertising. And it's also yeah, bringing it's... in this culture and it's bringing in memes from other channels which the streamer may not know, which the streamer's audience may not know. Okay, guys, is... um, Gino asked a very good question. What are sub emotes for people oh. who don't know? When um, you pay about $5 a month, you can subscribe to a channel which essentially, you know, X amount of the money goes to the person that isn't at that point. It's a bit like, sort of, there's a certain point where you have, like, a Twitch partnership, which is essentially they agree that with you, you and then... You a certain size. You when can, you not pay, everyone can get sub emotes. Yeah, when, once, once you have that option and then people pay $5 a month to subscribe to you, they get X amount of emotes that Twitch has agreed with you are fine for you to use. And then you put you know, people essentially can then put if they, it's like a three letter bit of your name or fours or whatever, and then yeah. the letter your specific emote comes up and you have to subscribe to that person to get that emote. Yeah, it's like um it's how some streamers make their money. Like with um subscriptions and that's uh, and ad revenue and stuff. And part of that is having these special smileys which you can use in other people's chats and all the way across Twitch. And again, it's I I it, I just don't like that it can be used in other people's chats because it's a rich get richer thing. It's an introducing of an unknown entity into someone else's chat, which the same reason I don't like raids. And you know, it's just kind of obnoxious going around seeing. It's like especially on Twitter, a lot of people reference these sub emotes. You don't have the picture. You are literally just typing in the command to post the picture. It's a bit irritating. Especially the when it's streamers I don't like. The only streamers I can deal with it being like where it's passed down from a, a channel is sort of when it's the community of that channel. Like there's J Smith's emotes, and they get used all the time in sort of the quote unquote true chat community streams. Like if I went to watch like Action Scotty or Brighton the Man or something, I'd comfortably expect to see J Smith OTI emotes because that's part of that community. But if I was having the most wear, like I stumbled into like a random person stream where we're seeing that, I'll be a bit okay. Yeah, like, I get, like, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I mean, this isn't really a big secret, but I'm not a big fan of uh, NLSS. So when I see a lot of NLSS sub emotes and memes and inside jokes and stuff being referenced outside of the NLSS, it's a bit irritating, and it did put me off twitch a lot because it's like great so this isn't actually twitch culture this isn't actually once my again, audience um, culture once again what is nlss for people uh, who don't northern line super show it's a big stream featuring like northern line and j smith oti and uh, rockley Rocky. smile and it's like i'm sh that they're, they're nice guys i i have no problem with the people involved with it except for like one or two i just don't like the stream that much it's not something i'd watch or enjoy but I used to watch and enjoy it, and I am acquaintances with all three of them. I uh, I am a mod on Northern Lines chat. I have modded it all of about three times before. The sheer weight of modding it and being in a stage where Northern Line did not appreciate what the chat was necessarily. So essentially, I had to sort of give up any... Like, you know, most mods by now will have a set of rules. I, I used to mod Northern Lines chat before there was any instigation of sort of rules to make chat yeah. basically legible and acceptable. So I, I originally did get flag off Northern Line for doing that. Though to be fair, I also had time to go out for six nine six nine sixty nine seconds. So at the same time, I had my fun. But no, like that chat was ridiculous. The NLSS Wait, community is kind of this weird thing. Yeah, where a lot uh, of it like, you got joined you got, out of nowhere. You got, you got flag off Northern Line for modding his chat. Yeah, or am I misunderstanding that? No, that was it was like. <laughs> One of the original NSS, like, it would have been within the first few weeks, but yeah, essentially, sort of, I was trying to make chat readable. Like, you know, it's sort of, there's a certain point where you sort of be like, right, well, this person's yeah. essentially just shit posting emotes. So you just go, yeah. right, I'm going to time you out. Mm -hmm. Or this person's just saying lol. Yeah. Like, yeah, I became quite an unpopular figure within his chat, and then he told, he sort of sent me a message later on, sort of like, well, that's great. Sort of, if chat's not happy with it, then just don't do it. Because I don't mind. So what? I was like, all right, man. What? Whatever. Wait. He changed, that opinion. he changed that opinion quite quickly afterwards, but I was... Yeah, I was, I was about to say, like, chat. hang on, you're going to let chat 
be the mods? Are you... What? Because yeah. I know that Jan has had issues with the fact that chat is still free and the fact that Northern Line wanted chat moderated later on. I just was yeah. not... I, I know, I know Jen's chat. spoken to Northern Line about a lot of stuff and he has yeah. actually made changes to the stream based off yeah. what she said, which is great. But... Okay... Uh, I, I don't really like talking about Northern Line that much because I have got a bit of a minor bit of history with him so it would be difficult to not be bitchy about that but I think in should, the issue with his chat is it's not his chat isn't built up as a community his chat is like his this chat thing is a meme. joined his and it was 3,000 people yeah, yeah his chat is Twitch like the J Smith chat was just the J Smith chat and people came into it slowly but it was just his chat mostly and mo so most of the jokes were understood which yeah. means that a lot of the stuff there is a community. And Rockley Smile is the same thing. And I think most people that have streams that grow end up with their own community and their own jokes and things, whereas the Northern yeah. Lion ch is just a complete mess. And that's why anything his jokes were became such cultured jokes, because these people right. just went, oh, it's so funny, and then like put it in the chat for about a month. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. but it's like, Twitch, you can generally track down a lot of the culture to NLSS or League of Legends, and now also Twitch plays Pokemon. And it's like, oh god, it's, it's, like, it's like all three of those. I, I'm not saying that their streams are bad. I was like, people, I have gotten a bit of flack for saying I don't like NLSS. NLSS, like their well, stream may be great. I fucking hate what they've done to Twitch. I fucking hate what yeah, they've the done to communities. It's the community outreach. It's the same thing that's happened with TV shows. It's the same thing that happens with films. It's the same yeah. thing that happens with anything uh, else. It's hang hang on. I, I, need, I, need to, I need to qualify something. So, uh, Venge, the reason why I let Parlock go on with NLSS is because, as an organization, it's pretty much pivotal to how Twitch... It's pretty much exemplary of how Twitch streaming culture is right now. Um... You aren't, Paul. Like you're not naming like Northern Lion himself, right? No, no. You're, you're naming. It, out it's a bit like how, yeah. It's a bit like how YouTubers will use PewDiePie as an example of stuff they don't like on YouTube. It's yes. the same with. It's like, I'm not saying that PewDiePie is a bad person. I'm not saying he's an awful YouTuber. I'm just saying I don't like stuff he does. And with the NLSS, I'm not saying that's a bad stream. I'm not saying he's an awful person. I'm saying I don't like. The after what, effects. Yeah, yeah, I don't like this. I don't like his style of streaming, and that is completely valid. Yeah. Like, when He's I said this. don't don't let me name names, I was more talking about don't let me name specific singular people. Yes. Because it's like there are people who I genuinely like and who I genuinely get on with, but when they stream, I can't watch them because of how they do it, and mm -hmm. I don't want to call them out on stuff because I like them because I'm friends with them. So it would be mm -hmm. mean of me to actually say that. Whereas with Northern Lion, he is such a big identifiable figure like PewDiePie, like Total Biscuit, that you can use him as an example of good and bad things to do in a certain medium. Yes, at, yeah. at this, at, I think at his level, the NLSS itself is, it's, is a separate entity. Yeah, yes. It's, yeah. it's actually, like, I wouldn't associate Northern Lion as being the, um, the head of NLSS more so as a part of it right now because it is on I think it's grown bigger than him. If yeah, you watch it's... if you watch his own personal videos, it's a very different vibe and it's a very different style to how the NLSS and I think you can attribute that to the fact that it's the three of them and it's formed based around all three of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cuz if you do, if you take out one person you see it change anyway. Like there was like a week maybe when Jay Smith was away and it was completely different. Completely it's like different. the difference between Ego Raptor and Game Grumps. Yeah. Yeah. Ego he's, he's, on his own he's, is totally different to how he is on Game Grumps, whereas Northern Lion's totally different on the NLSS as he is to his actual channel. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess you could say yeah, he's, he's a brand name. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's that's why I'm allowing Parlock to continue with Twitch uh, plays <laughs> Pokemon and um, the NLSS. So yeah, con it's like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to call out specific people. Mm. I, I, it's like when I've been talking to people in private, I've mentioned like specific people, but I wouldn't do that in a public place where they can't respond to that because that's just bitchy and unfair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyway, it's like the uh, thing. Thing is, like I said, Twitch community, Twitch culture is Twitch plays Pokemon. Northern um, 
NLSS and League of Legends with the Raise Your Dongers and oh, Lel69 Kappa and... Ugh. None of that here. None of that. <laughs> and it's like, that's why I decided to move to Hitbox, because Kappa isn't a thing. Sub emotes aren't a thing. A lot of the stuff from Twitch isn't actually a thing over here, because... It seems like at the moment with hit, Hitbox, if you want viewers, you've got to send them there yourself. There's no osmosis of viewers, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, um, there's an osmosis if you're actually friends with people. It's yes. like, there's like uh, a lot of people between mine, Vin's, and Hanan's streams because we're all friends and we all talk to each other a lot. But yeah. you wouldn't get like an outside streamer have viewers come into another outside streamer's stream because there's none of that osmosis which Twitch has with I, sub emotes and raiding and all that sort of thing. I believe Hit, at the Hitbox is purely a community of friends keeping within friends at the minute. Yeah. yeah. I've, and I've, it's I've not it's not to do with what games you play <clears> and it's not to do with anything like that. I believe at the moment Hitbox has sub emotes uh restricted to the channel. Yeah, that's exactly how I think they should do them. At the moment, um because I know this because uh, when BroBQ a very a fairly prominent streamer here on Hitbox. He uh, oh yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, he sent some people over to my channel. They tried to do the the meet emote, but it didn't work. Uh, Danson came in and said like, "Oh, we're 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 not doing that." Yeah, that that's what I really like about Hitbox. They understand why people are moving to Hitbox from Twitch, and they're going all the way with that. Mhm. Mm so anyway, like, con continue. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's like since I it's like cuz I originally planned to just quit streaming altogether and just never go back to it. But now that I've moved to Hitbox and I, I think I think it's really worked for me per, as cuz it's like I don't want to be I don't want my chat really to be just Twitch meme spewing really. I don't want the raise your cap of 69 lel. I'd rather have my own community with its own jokes and its own stuff, which you cannot get on Twitch anymore. You, you I think, can get. I think it's possible, but you've got to be a certain stuff. size. You've got to be yeah. a certain size, and once you pass a certain size, or people inevitably begin an osmosis to your channel, then yeah. I think slowly there's the chance of that creeping in. You can avoid it by being very tight on how you mod, but it's got to be a slow growth if you're doing that. You can't explode forward. And not yeah. expect not expect that to happen. It's a lot more yeah. difficult now on Twitch to avoid being out of the general Twitch culture and keep yeah, your own you, community you have than to it used throw to be. Yourself in that, if you, it's like there are people I know who I'm not going to name who ha who I like them as people, but they've had to throw themselves so much at the Twitch community and a lot of what what I don't like about Twitch to get big, and they've done really well at getting big, and I'm happy for them, but. It's not what I would personally do because I don't want that sort of community going on in my chat. Personally, I don't like a lot of the pandering that goes on on Twitch to the general culture. Do you know what I mean? To like reinforce it, and I'm kind of like, mm. can, can this you would not? be the point when I would want to move over to talking to Raiden. But it depends whether you two are done talking about Twitch culture. Because uh, pandering, oh, uh, raiding is Twitch bit, culture. I think it's I think it's its own little thing as well. It's like, a big part of Twitch culture. The, the question the question is sort of pandering and people playing the game. I, I don't understand what you mean. And by things pandering. like that, like the fact that you know how obviously raiding began as you had friends who might be streaming sort of at the same time as you. Yeah, you have a lot of shared viewership, and you go right, yeah, let's go over there and watch it. Whereas now, again, not to name names, but there are people, there's plenty of people that will sort of raid upwards. Oh, yeah, right. And there's things like that I, where you kind I, of are pandering to try and get attention to yeah, eventually right, turn that yeah. into views. Yes. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And as well, I think um, there is an element of sort of if people come in from a raid, you have to pander to their... In, there's a lot of people that will fold and pander to the interest of whoever's coming in. Yeah. Well, it can turn ugly really quickly if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that happen before. But it's like, for people who don't, as I, I know Gino in particular is very new to streaming, so doesn't un understand a lot of this. Uh, raiding is when, if you're finishing a stream, you'll send your viewers to another stream to watch them. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was doing my thinking out loud about raiding a while ago, 
I described it as two types of raiding. You've got raiding up, which is where you raid a bigger stream than you. And usually in the hope of getting acknowledgement from that streamer. And as a result of that, maybe getting a few new followers. And, you know, it may well be as well because you like that stream and want to share them. And that's completely fine. But there is always this subtext of you are doing that to get noticed in a bigger chat. I don't think I've ever got I don't think I've ever seen it done where there isn't some attempt to ploy it attention and then potentially turn that into a return. That there's nev never there's never there's never it without it. But I mean you can do stuff for more than one reason, but yeah. it's always that subtext. And then you've got raiding down where you raid a smaller channel than you, which is usually more genuine, but even then it is a case of you're doing that to get noticed. And you may well be trying well, to like, I think, that, I think that one's a lot more based out of friendship. Yeah, it is a the lot only, more. The only people I've ever known to rate down to me are people that I am good friends with. I'm not going to name names on this either because I don't want to start that one either. But there are people that I know. There's a, there's a few people I know that will still raid me, and those people are a significant degree bigger than me at this point. But they will raid down to me because I know them very well and I'm good friends with them, yeah. and they want to see me do well as well. Yeah. I agree that that's a lot more genuine. I don't think I've ever seen Raiden up done in a way that wasn't essentially trying to leech onto someone that's going big and then yeah. use that. Um, Gino, the big thing about raiding is that you usually do it under some sort of banner. You usually have like a group name which you go in and do it. So it's like, when I used to raid, because like, you know, you have to, I used to do it because you had two on Twitch. I used to do it under awkward raids. So everyone would go in and shout, awkward raid and stuff. And is like, I would call people my awkward and shit like that. And um, that is the obnoxious bit of raiding where you're, where you're going under a banner specifically to get noticed. And it's like, that's why I kind of love and hate the whole awkward raid thing I did. Because I hated it because it was literally just the obnoxious raiding, which I realised is shit. But then it's also because it was called awkward, it showed how fucking destructive it is. Because, mm -hmm. you know, these people are going in they're spamming a chat, they're bringing in an entire different culture which the st other streamer may not be familiar with, they may not know how to deal with it, the st streamer that you're raiding to may have completely different rules to your stream um, the viewers generally don't really care about the rules if they're raiding because they're just following a train yeah so, it's like it's. I'm not saying that all raids are done purely self-servingly I think there is always that you know, this guy's really cool, I want you to go see him. But there is always also that self-serving, I think we should do this because it will get me noticed, which is why I don't like it. One thing I think the, I... the element with Twitch is... Sorry to cut you off there, Vin, but... Oh, of course, I want to say sort of as, as follow-up to it is... Twitch is a lot about your ego. With YouTube, yes. I mean, you kind of just post content and hope that people watch it. And with Hitbox, obviously, you acknowledge there's whatever small audience there is, and it's kind of more an issue of fun. With Twitch, it's a lot more about ego, and over the past few months, I've seen people come in that have been a lot more about, I want to be successful. Yes. And Raiden is only the sort of tip of the iceberg as to how it comes to someone's ego, especially with the fact that sort of there might be things like the awkward raid. You'll be going in, all these people will come in on your behalf and say what you've told them to say, and you get to flaunt your ego across everyone's chat. And you get to take pride in the fact that you've got all these fans. And as well, sort of with streaming, it's... A lot of people probably wouldn't really give a toss if the chat didn't appear or not. Because basically all they use it for is a brief bit of comedy. And it makes their gameplay a bit easier and their commentary easier. And they just go, right, thank you very much. And it's all about them. And the focus is on them. And I think ro the things where they say sort of road to X followers as well do not help that. A lot of it is basically, here is my ego, here is who I am, everybody look at me, everybody pay attention to me, and that's like the way that live events obviously can go. It's the way that, say, a concert goes, compared to an album. And you, you can't help having that, for the most part. People will have egos doing this, but it gets yeah, so much more inflated now on Twitch. This. It gets so much more inflated on Twitch. Yeah. And um, I, was, I was just going to say, one thing I really, really don't like about um, streaming uh, in terms of raiding culture is that everyone's uh, part of a horde or army or you know it's just these words they militarize your viewers 
and I yeah, I really don't like that. Yeah. Like when even on YouTube when I first heard of the Bro Army, I was like, "That's a bad idea. That's a yeah. really bad idea." Like to put them behind a banner like that, it's it's just a bad idea, and I don't like it. I don't agree with it. Um, it's one of the reasons why I here on Hitbox, I'm part of BroBQ's cookout because it's it's not an army. You know, it's a it's a barbecue hangout. All right, the the term itself is you know pretty easy connotation, but here I've seen like uh, 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 I've seen army in the name. I've seen um, or cord, or cord. I've seen <laughs> platoon, and it's just <laughs> yeah. You laugh, but I've seen platoon. Platoon, and I'm like, yeah, oh. You've got hordes. You've got armies. You've got um, monsters. You've got all of these sort of weaponizing. Terms Welcome to the Stream Lantern use. Core team. Call my fluffy bunnies. Yeah, it's like it, it's a way of making a cult of personality. That's how you do on Twitch. You make a cult yeah. of personality. You harbor that with raids. You harbor that with titles like, like Awkward, and then you spread that through the use of raids, through the use of emotes, through the use of memes. Which is why NLSS has done so well. He Northern Lion already had a well-established thing. Then he brought in Jay Smith, then he brought in Rockley, who had their own communities with their own image and their own culture. They propagated this weird homogenization version, which is the NLSS, across three completely different communities. They all became one bigger one. They all got under this banner, and then they exploded and just spread that everywhere. And that's how you do is... Twitch. That, the NLSS community is almost like an accident. It's not even like militarized or anything and just people go yeah I just yeah I watch NLSS and then you know that they're in there because of the jokes you know they're yeah. part of that community because the jokes they haven't even had to sort of name it and enforce it it just is mm. yeah and it's like it's just but no, I've, I've completely like, stripped I'm... myself from off, off from any of that at this point yeah. you know the fact like... that I never get raids I don't participate in raids I don't participate in having a court of personality because I use chat as a communication form. If nobody's in chat, I don't speak, basically. Because the reason I stream is to chat to people and have an ongoing chat with people. Like, I'll have mm -hmm. debates practically with people sat in chat. And that's fine with the two or three people I consistently get in chat. Because <laughs> I've got 300 odd followers and I get about three people and you go, well, it's kind of bullshit, isn't it? And it's part of the yeah. reason why I almost, I boarded on quitting myself. The only reason I didn't quit on that stream that I particularly did was it's the first time I got raided and had any fucking viewers in months. And I was like, right, well, that puts me off quitting for at least a little bit now, I guess. Yeah. And it might sound egotistical, but if you stream to no one, it's one of the most soul-suckingly depressing experiences. That's what made me quit. That's, that's like the trigger. Yeah. That is like the last time I streamed before I quit and moved to Hitbox, I was playing Hearthstone. I think there was one person watching and it's like I just sort of stopped the stream and then just quit there and then because I was like, you know, I'm I'm doing all of the stuff that everyone else is doing. I've got my bow, I've got my all cord bollocks. I'm doing the raids. I've got my road to 200. I've got all of that bullshit, and it isn't working. And I'm and it feels fucking soulless. It feels like I'm following a template, which I don't want to do. And then in that like month and a half, which I wasn't streaming, I, I kind of stopped watching Twitch. It's like I'll still watch like Solon when he streams, and I'll still watch people I mod on Twitch. But for the whole, I don't really watch Twitch anymore. But I will watch like Vin. I will watch Hanan on Hitbox. I'll watch Kino. I'll watch a lot of Hitbox streams. And then that made me figure out that what I didn't like about streaming wasn't my stream. It was Twitch in general. And then I moved to Hitbox, and it's all fucking gone gravy. <laughs> the, one, the, one, the one time I'll acknowledge my ego with streaming is that my issues with streaming would happen wherever, because I like having people that watch and that I can speak to. I don't stream for my own benefit, because I can sit and play games happily in silence on my own. I stream because I want to chat to people while I'm doing it, and I enjoy having that streaming community. The fact is that even with 300 plus, plus followers, I have no community anymore. And I think that's part of why I issue with why I probably never moved to Hitbox is all I'd have is the same situation because I sort of left community politics and all that shit. I didn't sit in chats and everything. I was busy for sort of three months anyway. 
and I just kept YouTubing and then I just left YouTubing for a few months as well. And I am not part of any of these big community groups or anything where everyone raids internally. And that basically means that I don't get shit on Twitch. And I probably mm. still wouldn't get much on Hitbox. And I'm like, well, I acknowledge that. I still have a few dedicated viewers that will come and watch me. And that's fine. But it's, yeah, you just kind of lose pace with wanting to stream because no one's watching. And you think, well, I could just play the game on my own because what's the point? I get yeah. a bit like that with my art streams sometimes. I mean, I consistently get quite a lot of people watching, but I get no interaction. Like, yeah. no one talks, do and I'm like... Uh, Suki, I've no, I haven't seen one of your art streams, but do you just play music, or do you have a mic, or, or how do you um, do it? I Basically, I have um, two views of my work. I have the zoomed out version, so you can see it that way, and then what my screen actually looks like on the other half. And I play music as I work. But I'm um, like, I'll, if someone types something in chat, I will type. I'll chat to them. I don't tend to use my mic because I sing to the songs, <laughs> 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 and I, you know I don't think anyone wants to hear that. But I, it's I, like, I would, all right, all right. I, it's just the lack of interaction and kind of like, there's all these people here watching, but are they watching? Have they just got me on another tab? Uh, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of like. Uh, yeah. That, well, who am I doing this to? Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was wondering. If they were just like using you for your music or something. Probably, yeah, they probably are. You know, I've I've kind of blocked myself out of a lot of chats now. I tend to just have someone on in the background. If if no one's watching, I'll just use Netflix for the same purpose, which makes me sound like scum. But at the same time, like most people, I don't really want to watch, and I certainly don't want to get involved in chats off time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I totally understand. Like, I'll um, I'll watch Vince chat or Hanan or Palak or whoever's, and I'll put them up on like one monitor while I'm doing stuff on the other. But I'll say like hello in the chat, or, like you know how are y'all doing? And I'll pop yep. in every now and then, but it's the absolute nothingness in the little chat bar, and you're like, oh okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um. But then on the other hand, you go into a big chat with an active chat, oh, and then God. I look at it. And it's it's like, a mess. Me, 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 me. Notice me, streamer. Me, me, me. Let's play yeah. Disco Dodgeball. Me, me, me. It's like, I'm so fucking glad no one talks in my streams now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've modded this on that. Had, I've, I've modded chats with thousands of people. I just think I feel. You have, to, you have to watch that chat actively. You have to pay attention to what each person is memeing. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> Three hours. <sighs> I can I, I've never been to an NLSS chat, but I can see it in my mind's eye. One person starts to raise your donger thing, oh, and God. then suddenly, nothing but that in God. chat. Later on, That's later on, it became a specific chat. time of. There was only a certain amount of time when you could allow the bot to let people say raise your dongers, which is essentially organized chaos. But I just enjoyed fucking with people and just going right. Two seconds of raging dongers. By the time anyone realizes that you've said it, the bots closed it off, and then you just watch a load of people get timed out for saying it. That's the most beautifully like just destructive thing because you just watch all these idiots get banned, and you're just like, yes, <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> that that must be gratifying. I love the satisfaction of swinging the ban hammer. Mm. Like I had a guy coming. I was painting my sexy Batman, and this guy came in and started giving me so much abuse. Like, what are you doing? Why are you making Batman? Why are you humiliating him so much? I'm like, Sweeters are the sex symbol. He's awesome. It's <sighs> the fictional character, dude. Get over it. And yeah. it just like all this stuff. And I was like, right, bang. I was like, ah, oh, band, peace, um, <laughs> silence. Yeah. I, I had I, wait, I, 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 time to go out for sixty nine, sixty nine, sixty nine. Because I did the maths on it, and it was about eight days. Like Northern Lion Rocky Smart with like a screenshot, and I think I still got the screenshot saved. And he was like, "This guy, the mod banned me for six hundred forty thousand seconds." <laughs> like, oh, you dick. And like I was like, "Yeah, I banned him for about eight days, and he whinged, and I am, him. but then I still banned him for sort of like one less sixty nine, which was still about two hours." And I was like, "Yep." <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I I is that I mod a lot of. It's like I mod Vin, I mod Hanan, I mod uh, Kino when he's streaming and I'm awake. I mod Solon. I, I mod a lot of streams. The way I do it, if I'm not banning anyone, I'm using the fuck out of my moderator powers for everything. It's it's gifts just, everywhere. Using gifts. Oh yeah, my god. As soon as channel. Shit... <laughs> yeah, but then it's like, 
soon as shit actually goes down, without sounding cocky, I'm a fucking good moderator. It's like no, no, when, you you are like, on point. This, yeah, yeah. It's like when a lot of shit went down in someone's stream, and it's like they had wave after wave after wave of really abusive shit from trolls. Yeah. I, I, it's like I spent about a good half an hour doing nothing but banning someone every second. Because like they just I, re they refresh and make new accounts, and it's like, okay, yeah. I'm not gonna be spamming gifts right now. I'm actually gonna fucking do my job, and it's like. That's the way to do. I don't want to be that sort of mod which is just there to enforce rules because you know I fucking like the stream as well. I'm gonna sit there and enjoy it as well. I just happen to be able to post gifts, which I'm gonna do because I like gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, Gino is asking for a gift right now. <laughs> I am on it. <laughs> Thank I'm, you. I'm got, I just have my gift folder constantly open. I never close it. When Jay Smith did his 52-hour stream, which is obviously when he got really big and famous he oh accidentally modded me that was that was like my first time being a mod anywhere that was like he accidentally modded me and he was maybe like the first the second morning to us in britland so it's like the first night and i remember actually like there was an element of any time it got bigger you had to actually like reinforce whatever rules were set but for the most part it was enjoyable which is essentially just community growth in fast motion is it grows, but you just have to make sure that everyone knows what the fuck the law is, and if they leave, yeah. they leave. But I, if I don't, if I'm not being a mod for that kind of purpose, if someone doesn't need me being a mod, they've made me a mod for general reasons. I don't really like being a mod. I've said that to people before, and it's a reason why I'm not a mod on many Twitch channels anymore. Because I basically went, "There's no reason for me to be a mod," so I just don't. I, so I, like I, will, I will tie people out and shit because I feel like it. Because. I'm that kind of sarcastic dick, but at the same time, like, I have no reason for it. Yeah, I, I, I like it's I, like I only a good way to tell if I like your stream is to mod me and see if I actually moderate because <laughs> it's like I like being a mod because I don't. It's like I only watch my friends stream and I don't particularly like seeing my friends get angry or stressed at someone in chat. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm a mod, that means I can stop that before it happens. So it's I just like. I feel more comfortable being a mod in streams than not. Mm -hmm. I actually had to ban my first person uh, a couple nights ago. Ooh, seriously? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a troll account. Um, said some really inappropriate things. Uh, but yeah, I had to ban my very first person. I've been streaming since December. Yep. So was that your pretty look actually? Uh, yeah. Of course, I was asleep for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had uh, to ban a few people, and it's, it's never fun because you're like, "Why are you doing this?" Yeah. What do you get out uh, of this? Yeah, Jason. Jason was there for that ban. He, the 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 character in question, launched into a very inappropriate line of jokes, and I was like, "Okay, you got one shot to apologize," and he didn't. So ban. That's what Northern Line guests are coming to your for your hitbox channel. <laughs> <laughs> By what's his name? PewDiePie. Pie. PewDiePie. Ah. PewDiePie. Pierre. Pierre. Yeah. Pierre. <laughs> that just yeah. sounds like a French character that he's now going to employ in some of his videos when he wants to be weirdly oh offensive. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I can just see it now. Oh, Barrels. Oh, uh, please. No. No. <laughs> Just no. No! Why? Why? This does not need to e exist. <laughs> Pewdie Pierre, please, no. We, we, don't, we don't need you to exist. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry what I've unleashed on the world. Go. Pewdie Pierre. Pewdie I'm like, Pierre. I'm like, yeah, me accidentally almost posting porn in the chat. I'll say I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Releasing Pewdie Pierre on the world. I am genuinely emotionally sorry. For <laughs> Wait, hang on. Oh, almost so Pewdie Pierre. No. Almost posting. It wasn't. It was only porn. almost. It, it it was just smart. Okay, but don't none of you spread. Don't any of you spread the uh, PewDiePierre thing, all right? I will hunt you down. Raise your 69 That is not a hitbox culture joke. Don't even try it. 
<laughs> I will hunt Raise you your down. 69 PewDiePie's, lel dongers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it, Dex. Oh, gif, oh, gif, oh, gif. Oh my god. <laughs> Please don't. I, Sully gifts are just more a me thing. If I'm in a mod, that's gonna be there yeah. anyway. That's not a me. That's just me being me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh my god, it's a whale! Have <laughs> <laughs> you just known? <laughs> Have you only just noticed? Yeah! Yes. Do you just know? I, I thought it was a hoodie with like a football in it. Like, uh, fuck it, what? <laughs> I thought the same as Jason. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I have to be honest, when I first met you on Twitter, I was like, wait, what's that? Oh, it's a whale. It took me a while. Oh my god, for a long time. Slam a What is that? Oh my god. <laughs> 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 this is just like the time he realized pseudo wudo was yeah. actually for pseudo wood. wood. <laughs> when he got that revelation, it was like, oh my god, Parlon. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still here? Is he left? <laughs> yes, it is indeed a whale. Yes. Oh, Sugi, no, bad Sugi. Bad Sugi. I'm just, I'm just now looking at chat like, no, bad Sugi. <laughs> In fact, I'm, I'm going to post a picture of the whale just to prove to people that it is indeed a whale okay. on Twitter. If everyone that follows me after, after the podcast is done, I'll show you the whale. Oh, but I'm also going to with hashtag PewDiePie, so, you know. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. Can we make this a thing? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Two, you're was, gonna, you can just call PewDiePie and chat. Not be a thing. <laughs> PewDiePie does not need to exist. Go, like seriously. I'm gonna turn to a sketch comedy channel and just do uh, PewDiePie videos. <laughs> it's gonna be one of our characters. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> PewDiePie or like, Marky Pierre? Oh my god! Please. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? What have I started? Just, Indigo, just really badly named. YouTube. Indigo, you are a mod. Don't even. Don't even start. <laughs> Why are you being so mean to PewDiePie? Stop! Leave PewDiePie alone! No! What flag? What flag? Scary <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Oh my god. Uh, Andres, I see your chat. I mean, I see your tweet. <laughs> Andres, do it, do it. I see your damn tweet. Don't, don't worry, I'll set up a tweet deck column for PewDiePie. I'll see everyone that's talking about it. We all good. Magnifique. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off, beauty beer. No. Hang on. Oui. I, I have a... <laughs> no. No. Oui. Well. No. <laughs> Hang on, Book where is it? Book of the beauty beer. Ah, uh, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Totally boy in a barrel. Totally. <laughs> then... if, you, if you go in Russian, this beauty... <laughs> <laughs> This is just a bit of the show where you just start spamming gifts. This is, yes, this is the spamming, spamming gifts part. But yeah, PewDiePie, no. I'm just, I'm Machete just... don't tweet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Machete Kills is on Netflix. Oh, God. Yeah, I thought the movies, I was like, nah, I have to watch both of them. It's magical. <laughs> Marky Pierre. <laughs> I've, already, already got of, I've already got a stack of films I still need to watch, and all I'm doing is I'm watching Netflix TV shows 24 7. Rage, thank you, Trent. <laughs> I came out of my God, that one's actually kind of scary. <laughs> Hades a... was actually kind of scary. It's yeah. Supposedly. Bonjour, mes amis. How's it going? My name is Le PewDiePie. Oh my God. Why Bonjour, do you have no. the Le? Don't have the Le. I could just 
for Foreign Legion. Don't add the le. No, why did you add the le? You <laughs> son of a gun. Why you did I say it? <laughs> Parlock, what have you done? I expected no, no, you wanted to be the worst. In any game where they offer me geographical locations for where <laughs> They're coming from France. First name Pudy, second name Pierre. <laughs> oh my god! Why is this a thing? This should be a thing! Damn this day! We've done a horrible- we brought a horrible calamity onto the world this day. <laughs> so... You have to say it with the accent as well, so it's like PewDiePierre. PewDiePierre! Sacre bleu, c'est PewDiePierre. <laughs> un escargot, un baguette. <laughs> Sacre bleu, un barrel. Oh my Où est le Andres, it will not be a meme. PewDiePierre dies today. First hitbox culture joke, uh, remove. <laughs> That's a new stream. Quick, okay, I'm going to Vine. <laughs> <laughs> oh Get a, not to YouTube. <laughs> not to YouTube, oh. just Vine. Vine's the me. future, man. Vine! Vine and LP in six second segments. What's up? Stop! What? Everything. The podcast. The <laughs> show. Just end it now. End My it now. <laughs> Just end it all, please. <laughs> yeah, we're actually going on in three hours. Do you guys want to stick around for viewer questions, or...? I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I can stay. <laughs> Just going to say I'm posting gifts, because I collect. I, I can keep going with the PewDiePierre all night, and nothing's stopping me here. Oh, oh my... <laughs> The longer you keep the podcast going, the more art we can work on. It's great. Oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> I actually liked it in Roman. What have I done? Oh, what did uh, Parlock mind handling that? What is that, Jason? Uh, I will check. He does it on print screen. You're gonna have to, you know, control, copy, image, whatever. <laughs> Pewdiepie Pierre was born today, and he dies today. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> well done. I don't need channel X anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Jason. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just kind of Are you vaguely disappointed in all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just completely disappointed. <laughs> why, why wreck it raw fast? Still be so expensive on Blu-ray. I don't know because I want to buy it. I went and saw it in the cinema when it came out because I was like, oh, and then please I was like, don't get me started on Wreck It Ralph. So many no. feelings. No. Oh my god, that film made me cry. I watched it for the first time today and... Ah! I saw your tweets, I was like, oh, he's on the roller coaster uh, right now. Yeah, it's... it's. Oh, hey, Bill, how's it going, buddy? Uh, yeah, I, I, I first watched that, um... Oh, god, must oh, would've been... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there, pal. Like... Oh, which no. meant there were loads of kids around. He's, oh, he's, wa he's off wailing in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Arlo, just because you are a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy. Just because Why you're a bad he guy. He's a good guy in Street Fighter Cannon. I, I don't know. I had that little bridge. So. He was a bad guy. I don't. I don't get why he's there. He's a. He's not a bad guy. He is. Anyway. <laughs> hey, gaming Tom. Welcome to the podcast. All right. See you later, Max. Hi, hey, gaming Tom. Not? <laughs> so, so while Parlock is off wailing in the background, <laughs> how about we get to some? Uh, He's doing the dog thing where you just like run around and then flames come up and shit. He's doing that exact shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Well, anyway, how about we open it up to some viewer questions? Uh, feel free to ask 
my, uh, myself, um, Supervin47, Parlock, uh, Boy in a Barrel, or Suki, any questions about uh, streaming, gaming, art for Suki? Don't ask us about. Don't ask the three of us about art. Just ask her. Hi. Nice to meet you. I've I've studied art. Oh, can draw. Uh, I've seen his. Twitter. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You're a Mushu. You're Mushu. It's just that I don't. I don't like. My art. Okay, then. I, I studied art. <laughs> I studied art at age fourteen, so I I am more than qualified to discuss art at any level. <laughs> Beauty Pierre, <beer>, why? <laughs> Beauty Pierre, <beer>, why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right. Good night, Vange. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Why does your whale not look like a whale? Where's your whale-proof pick? <laughs> I told you I'm gonna put everyone that follows me after this after this podcast will see my whale-proof pick because I posted it then. Um. L- uh, let me guess. Snowy Pearl could be that one. Yes, it is. Oh, cool, Jason. Artist with with the best. Mm-hmm. Totally not future baristas. Oh, Eniko. Uh, one question you have, you may already answered it. Uh, do you like the lack of emotes on Hitbox compared to Twitch? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, um, I spend like no time on Hitbox, so I wouldn't know. I much prefer the customizable like uh, individual gifts. Yeah. They're much better. And also, I, I do like the fact that uh, only mods can post GIFs. Yes. Um, so that do is, I. That is the most important part, because I don't think I could be able to handle it if all of a sudden, like, all the dick GIFs show up. Or, like, like in a... Just, <laughs> just generally... In a yeah, you trust me as a mod. <laughs> just, the guy who almost <laughs> posted dicks today in your chat. He <laughs> <It> almost posted... <laughs> There's video well, I, documentation. I, I, yeah, but there weren't dicks in it. <laughs> there was fire between his legs. <laughs> there was ample that was goochness. Just berries. I, I like that your defense was yeah, but there weren't dicks in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like how that's your defense. Um, I will my, probably my play. My defense is fuck off. I post what I like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh yeah, Jason does a lot of illustrations. He showed me a couple of his, uh, a couple nights ago when I was playing Ascendant. Um, Jason, feel free to post it, actually. Uh, I think he was working on banners for a, uh, role-playing market or something like that. Um, but yeah, I will, I will play more Ascendant later tonight, maybe, after, um, after I play through Outlast, I guess. Or maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm god. I'm not prude. I base the whole project on bulging pants. Yes, she I'm does. Not I'm not a prude. I'll happily stare at my own joke when I go to the toilet. But, uh. Swaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
right now, Beauty Pierre <laughs> never leaves this chat. <laughs> never. <laughs> wow. I, I need this. Wow. Okay, but wow. Wow. I need to. And I, I, I need to smother this right now. PewDiePie Pierre never leaves this place. <laughs> Ever. And you people watching this on YouTube, don't do it. It's a bad time. Well, you could you could end it here. You could edit it out every mention of PewDiePie Pierre on the eventual video that uploads to YouTube. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, you oh. have what? You have the PewDiePie Pierre hashtag on your- Oh my god. You're not helping, Farlock! <laughs> <laughs> so, so who sent up the PewDiePie Pierre hitbox account so we can pick up the new fresh, French accented thing? <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna slap that person with a wet pool noodle. If I find <laughs> out whoever does that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care where you are, I will fly to you if I have to. <laughs> I will be in Paris, France. I will find you. Wait, wasn't Taken set in Paris, France? Probably. I will, I will totally find you. Rush Hour 3 was in France. Yes, it was. Oh. Andres, no. <laughs> oh, damn it. Um. Wow, good job, Vin. You are so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I am super proud of you. At least you tried. <laughs> Shut up. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I I'm I'm trying so hard. <laughs> not to murder us. <laughs> yes. But in the end it doesn't even matter. Nope. <laughs> We're back to that joke again. <laughs> Told you full circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Any more questions before we end it? We're going on, yeah, about three hours. Lace screams. Oh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> the only sound that can make it better is that aggressive, like, table slap. <laughs> like, the, only no the only noises that are going to happen now are, like, a punch on the wall, and then, like, just a headbutt to the wall, and then just Vin coming behind, just going, ow! God damn it, you all. <laughs> That's a very apt gif, by the way, Bartlock. Thank you. Just... <laughs> hey, Danjo. <laughs> why would I end this? <laughs> why would I end? Why would I end my own suffering? Just oh my god, the stream. Yeah, we Vin, all you have to do is just spin out the stream into a uh, bank holiday weekend stream, and that will be fun. Oh my! You just, you just spin out the podcast. Oh my! Yeah, I've got God. nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> trend. Trend. No. Can we un can we unmod trend? I could. <laughs> I could trend no trend be nice. Trend fantastique frere fist to you. Can we get rid of Suku? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even blame you. <laughs> I, I love I love the beat. And then Sparlux was like, can we get rid of this one of the podcasters? <laughs> <laughs> that shit's comedy gold. <laughs> comedy gold. Oh, you guys. <laughs> oh, my. Hey, Liz. How's it going? Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Hi, Liz. <laughs> If you, remove, if you remove Suki, then you get rid of the perfect diversity spread that we've got going on here. <laughs> Can we get rid of... Ben? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just make it all English. Yeah, yeah. you only it with your Americanization. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you okay there? Oh, we've killed him. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's the first step to taking over the stream. <laughs> you asshole. This is our plan, Hello. It's the second British invasion. <laughs> the, queen, the Queen planned this all along. That's how we got it back. I, I've got an army of corgis waiting. We're just... I'm waiting for the corgi gifts. Just all the corgi gifts. <laughs> oh my god. My brain hurts so much right now. We've got the, we've got the cannons ready. We've got the ships going. Oh my god. We're all ready to set out Portsmouth as soon as. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, Parlock. <laughs> <laughs> Can we at least end this on video game talk? Can we at least? <laughs> at le um. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let Parlock handle that one. I'm not even gonna try. Please be porn, please be porn, please be porn, please be porn. Oh. Uh, video, video game dudes. Who's, who's I don't the get it. Hmm? I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> what is that? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. What does that mean? Got beer? Is that an American thing? I No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Don't I don't know. get it. Look at the driver to the left. Oh, he's is... packed half on the grass. Oh, okay. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay, okay. I get it, but it's not funny. <laughs> what the hell is up with all these weird people <laughs> following me? What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, hang on. Hang on. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> oh, Car, car look, we've got one chance for me to not murder you. Oh, fuck it, Carl! <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that actually is... Kind of brilliant. <laughs> I guess. Why does this, this exist? Why does this? This should not exist. Right. So, so which mod's gonna put that to a command? It was one un unplanned comment that no one actually noticed for a while. As soon as I said it, <coughs> and it's become trying this. To, trying to you just uh, you just make a command PDP. And, uh, Don't do even. <laughs> Don't you even sweat trend no. Ben, you could tell him make me a mod and I wouldn't abuse it. <laughs> Fucking shit, Parlock! <laughs> I hate you so much right now. I hate you so much right now. You don't even you don't even <clears throat> Oh god. <laughs> oh god. What have I done? I should have never put the three of you in the same room. Ever. That's it. You're all separated. This is never happening again. That's it. I'm Welcome never to... coming on this podcast again. I've ruined two of them. Let's make a room, man. Let's just make a room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Let's just make a British podcast with uh, Blackjack and Dongs. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. No. <laughs> stream my stream culture. What culture? That's it. Vin the, sometimes the, plays classical music. Now. I do play classical music. Oh <sighs> my god. Oh my god. I P. I, comes I, with a little French flag. Oh, fuck. Fuck! Oh. Oh, look at my hero. Yeah, I know Sam. Yeah, I know Sam. <laughs> oh my god. Parlock, why? I hate my life. I hate my existence. <laughs> why? Oh, don't you I even, Barrel Boy? <laughs> don't you even? I'm bad, and that's good. <laughs> I'll never be good, and that's not bad. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Oh my god. <clears throat> Why does that exist? I, I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> Suki! <laughs> Suki! Hate, what are you doing? I can't be trusted. I'm not going <laughs> to say I'm sorry because I'm not. <laughs> I'll get Zang grief on the phone. <laughs> Gino. Suki. <laughs> I have tweet deck open as soon like as soon as I saw that I was like, God damn it, Suki. <laughs> Andres, you're not so helping. Sorry. Just because oh, you are left so yeah, sorry. Not, you are a bad guy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I I think we are going to end it there. If there are going if there are not gonna be any more legitimate questions <laughs> or something <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate I hate you. Cart, cart, cart. Listen, <laughs> you're my brother, but I hate you so much right now. I hate, I hate you so much right now. <laughs> so I have tweet deck open. I have the home notifications and a list of LP friends, and it's basically cart at the top of all three of them <laughs> with that fucking image. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I, I, I think we're done here. I, I, I think we're done here. Don't you even Marlock. <laughs> oh god. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you go to hell. Go to hell. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you're not helping. <laughs> yeah, PewDiePierre finds a way. <laughs> Life uh, finds a way. Oh my god. PewDiePierre, PewDiePierre may surrender, but he'll find a way. Um, at the pod. Oh, Jason. Jason's there asking. There was a podcast on this somewhere. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> and I, said, I said one word and I've ruined and everything. There's, there's oh, a podcast um, about an hour ago. It's become this. <laughs> do, do, and <laughs> we'll keep this stream up 24-7. <laughs> no. Uh, Gino, by the way, um, the Gladys commands are specific to your own channel. There are a couple of global ch commands, but um, stuff like this, uh, it, it won't appear on your channel. Don't worry about it. God damn it. Unless unless someone sets it to be on your channel as well. I... I... <sighs> My face is not a pleased face. Thank you, Parlock. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Parlock. <laughs> yes. Burn it. Burn the image. <laughs> Get PewDiePie to your channel. No. <laughs> But I'm going to come to Hitbox now just to, just to make PewDiePie a thing. Oh, you <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> you son of a gun. Oh, Trend, don't you even. <laughs> yes, just get rid of it entirely. Completely. Thank you. It's okay, I've got the Imgur link on my, uh, on my clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, Barrel, why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kids, play nice. I, I, don't want, I don't want to clean up a bloodbath. Along with all this stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Jason. No. Best. <laughs> Best podcast ever! Oh my god. Best podcast 2K14. Yep. <laughs>
<laughs> you you have a microphone, Marlo. I know. <laughs> we've just reached fun. that point now. Yes, I, I, I think, think we reached that point a while ago, but yeah. we just let no, it carry on because we've killed Vin, so we can't stop it. Yeah, I can't. I can't. You even. can't stop the PewDiePie signal. I can't. <laughs> Please. He's starting, he's starting to come under control again now, but we're just sending him off. Oh my god. I haven't <laughs> even eaten. <laughs> this is great, especially considering we were talking about streaming culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't and, you... Uh, we were talking about chat modding as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's, this is exemplar. <laughs> this podcast right here is everything you should it's not perfect. do. This this will be remembered as the day when Hitbox went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Living oh in for me. <laughs> this isn't even my fault anymore. All right. This is Vince's fault. Yes. This has gone beyond my fault. Yes. <laughs> Alright, but no, seriously. You let this happen, Vin. You Ser- let this happen. Seriously, though, guys. Mm. Seriously, guys, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, we're, we're done. Yeah, guys. Your mod has spoken. Your admin has spoken. Seriously, guys. Well, fuck that guy. See, I found that gif. You wouldn't have that gif without me. No, this is true. This is actually one of Parlock's gifts. <coughs> yeah. But, um, if there... Uh, check link? What link? Oh, uh, for it's Wonder Woman... It's another confusing picture. For uh, Wonder Woman... For Suki's Wonder Woman. I think. Right? Oh, what? I can't read the text, what does it say? I can't either. <clears throat> oh. Old image, okay. How do you set a topic within Hitbox? What do you mean? What do you mean, Juno? Oh, um, title. Oh, title. Um, so you <clears throat> you open up your dashboard, right? It's uh, it's over on the on the side there in Hitbox. So you open up the Hitbox main. You can also site. do exclamation mark title in. Chat if you have Gladys, Gladys, if you have Gladys, yes. But if you don't, you can open up the dashboard. Yeah, best part of podcast streaming tutorials. <laughs> Hitbox specific streaming tutorials for when people start moving over and they just you just go right. Well, if you cut to about the third hour, if you can break through the laughter <laughs> and the PDP ads, then you'll hear some great tips on how to set up your stream. No, Jason. Um, actually, I can show you right here. I can show you right here. Um, so over here, you just oh click on God. it and you click on dashboard. There you go. Easy. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's a town playing some Dota 2 now. If uh, anyone, if anyone needs to spread PewDiePie to the rest of Hitbox, no. there you go. There's there's one. No. <laughs> no. The PewDiePie <laughs> Legion. Seriously, seriously, guys. PewDiePie says, raid, lol. <laughs> there goes a Kill Minecraft challenge. You can go there with it. Seriously, you guys. Enough. But we don't condone raiding. Enough. I'm, I'm, we don't condone raining or Frenchmen. I'm, I'm putting I'm putting an official end to the PDPR stuff because I'm kind of getting a little bit annoyed at it. So, just to let you know, I don't get annoyed easily. Um, but yeah, I I think. We're gonna call it here, uh, guys. Feel free to pimp out your stuff. Uh, tell people about what your what projects you're setting up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate you guys. <laughs> I just don't like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate you guys. I'm just being human. I'm I'm not mad. I'm just disapp- Oh no. It's just disappointed. Oh no, I can't I can't say that, Parlock. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't say that. That would be <laughs> That would be soul crushing. Not, not really cuz I don't give a shit. 
I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm just so. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed in you kids. I thought you could do better with your lives. Oh my god. I, I've never understood why people see I'm disappointed as a as like a soul crushing thing. It's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to carry on being awesome. Fuck you guys. And that's why I'm a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, feel free. Well, what projects are you guys planning on, or, or where can we find you? Um, <laughs> actually, I'm you know, go we'll, fire. We'll we'll go we'll go backwards this time. Parlock. Yes. Oh, oh, mixing it up. Um, more X Fatalis, more Sabian Hunted, more Banner Saga, more fucking other ser- uh, Bound by Flame. Uh, two oh, new I series. I did what they are. I thought it was gonna be uh, more streaming. <laughs> Can I go home now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Okay, Suki. I want to get. I want to get off this bus. <laughs> <laughs> You can never get off Mr. Bones' wild ride. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Suki, Suki, please. Right, well, what are you, I can what are be you found at, at the Suki, or the Suki, wherever. Uh, on my channel, I am working on a buttload of Star Trek stuff. Um, Star Trek Online, Elite Force, Star Trek Voyager, Elite Force, Super Mega, Super Thing. can't remember its title is. I, just the old Star Trek games, basically. And okay. there'll be Saints Row with Sparky. And I think we're trying to get some like Gary's Mod stuff set up with some people. So Ooh. if you fancy... Or, okay. you know, Guns of Icarus, or, you know, some multiplayer stuff, trying to get some art site up. So, yeah, that's pretty much what's coming on my channel soon. Hmm. All right. Um, Boy in a Barrel, what, are you working on anything soon, or just hanging out uh, in the chat? Well, what I'll be doing on YouTube is I've got a Valkyria Chronicles Let's Play that's still going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Got, a, got a 50 Cent Let's Play that's coming to an end next week. Episode 7 of that will be up, so that will be finished. And then you can all reel in horror at the world of mid noughties licensed games. Um, I will be doing a Mass Effect Let's Play within the next month because I'm going to start doing all three of those games. So that's going to be a long time. And there is another Let's Play that will be starting next Saturday that I still haven't figured out what I'm going to play. Mm. But that will be a thing. I need to figure out what that is. And okay. at Twitch, I'll probably be doing whatever the hell I want to do on Twitch. And at Twitter, I'll probably still be posting more weird, obnoxious, opinionated shit. Okay. Um, I will be posting more uh, Saints Row 3 uh, gameplay, as well as starting up my Deus Ex Human Revolutions walkthrough again, actually. Um, I'll be out of town from June 18th to July 5th. So I need to get working on a lot, a lot of recordings, actually. But um, aside from that, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, you guys have been watching the Checkpoint Podcast <laughs> with my s- with myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Gonna resist temptation to make the uh, podcast joke now when you when you uh, when you say who everyone is as we leave. Sweet. Oh my god! <laughs> Just end it. We're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, done. I'm done with this. I'm done with you all. No. All right. We will see you guys never again because the podcast is over. <laughs> Goodbye. We're getting banned from everything. Don't mind us. <laughs> and it's all my fault. All right. Goodbye, guys. And.